What's up, everybody? This is Carrick with ACG, and I'm here with Abzi for podcast number 459. 459, right? Yes. Best nice. Gaming Podcast. We will be covering some of the information that popped today on the independent, whatever that was called, Triple I independent podcast that they did. I hate that name. Some other, yeah, Can it's we? a little... A little bit harder I to remember. That name. Well, people don't know what triple A is or double A or single A, and now we got like triple I and I don't know, man. That's what it stands triple for. ND. Yeah, like ND, triple ND, triple I. I thought it was three companies that might have had an I in their name. I never, oh. I because I didn't track it. So, well, dude, I don't know. That's what that's I mind think. blowing. I just no, no, don't it like, doesn't I'm, matter I'm if so it's dumb. right or wrong. That is exactly <laughs> yeah. what it's that is exactly that is it. That is it. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, but anyway, we're going to be covering a bunch of stuff. We're going to be talking about a bunch of games. I want to say thanks to everybody who's become YouTube members. YouTube membership gets you Discord uh, entry. And I think we've had about 400 people in the last couple last couple of months since we started. And I want to say how much I appreciate everybody who does jump in. I've had some people leave and say, ah, it's not for me. I had one or two people who didn't really understand Discord. I get that. And I want to say that when you jump in, just ask, because especially when you're new, people always try to make sure that everybody, you know, we definitely take the piss out of one another. But when it comes to new people, they want to make sure that they feel um, active and like that, you know, it's a cool place to talk about games. This last month or two, most of that was around Dragon's Dogma, uh, some Starfield and uh, Kingdoms or Kingdom, right? Um, um? Horizon. Horizon. Oh, right. uh, uh, Forbidden West? Forbidden West. I keep calling it Kingdom for some reason. Yeah. Oh, I know why, because we were talking about that prior to yeah. jumping into the podcast. Yeah. So yeah. it's been a great time, and I do want to say how much I, I, I appreciate it, because we don't do sponsors. And so, you know, you're not going to get a long ad read with us. You may get some bullshit you don't agree with, but I can tell you, no matter what, it is not paid for, because unless Abzi's getting the money, I'm not. So somebody, if, if it is paid for, somebody else is getting the cash, not us. You, Speaking you, of, you started this channel on a foundation that you're just never going to... Now I'm never going to be able no to get out of it. No sponsored bullcrap. That's your thing, dude. You're stuck. I'm never, never, never going to get out of it. I, I, like I yeah. said, once a month, I should do a sponsored channel, which is every single thing, every game yeah. somebody's offered me money for. So it'd be like Netties, Activision, um, you know, EA, well, EA doesn't that I know of, but you know, and just have this call it like the 10 minute sponsored yes. stream where I'm like, Hey, have you played Shade and it's all or, in or, AI or, or Shadow Make Legends or oh my god, it's all, all in, AI. in AI, piss piss off people to the max, but it's dude. my voice, Everything's so I'll AI. be like, Hello, Your voice, yeah, I love Raid Shadow Legends. You should also join me, yes, do the old 2.5. Chat GPT, the one we used for yeah, reviews, yeah, yeah, yeah. or three was that three? Yeah, that was a blast. Use Siri, yeah, yeah, right, or <laughs> Amazon device. What's up, Froggy Timber says, truly the best gaming podcast. We try, probably not the best, but it's very fun to do. Christopher, first podcast post uh, uh, eclipse. It, that is true. We made it through the eclipse. The the world didn't fall down and destroy us all, which is nice. Um, I'm just immersed in the immersion of it all. Mark, Mark Clark says, I don't know Beautiful. what that means. I don't know what that means. Baldazzi says, I love potatoes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So do I. It's weird that we talked about potatoes right before this podcast. It's not a thing live. you love, though. Like, it's just, it's potatoes. Like, you either like it. I mean, do you, do people not, like, it's just potatoes, man. You just, I know do some people it? don't like potatoes. Mm -hmm. And then I also know people who like their like potatoes mashed up where it's not mm -hmm. smooth. It's got a little bumps in it. It's got the chunks, oh. which is, yeah. I think in Thanksgiving, there's usually, like in America, north and south, and chunks and anti-chunks. Uh -huh. Like there's I'm anti chunk two, There's smooth, two huge groups. smooth, baby. You know, yeah. Or there's, there's also Texas potatoes. and everybody else. So there's Texas, everybody else, yeah. north, south. I guess in division conferences, east, central, west, and then probably and no chunks gravy. or no chunks. No Eat gravy. That shit, uh, no, I, yeah. Eat that shit without oh, gravy. Yeah, you know what? I guess I don't like the gravy. I like itself. stuffing, though. You know, yeah, I don't stuffing. want the stuffing Stuffing's that's good, so good and been shoved into turkey. I want the stuffing out of the box yeah. that like yeah, looks yeah, like yeah. It, it was kicked by or the you know, leftovers, you know. <laughs> yeah, that it was kicked down by a bad UPS delivery driver. You put it yeah. in, you put some water to rehydrocanate it or Oof. whatever, and it fluffs up, and then you yeah. eat that shit. And it doesn't really taste like anything other than mush salt. and salt. Yeah. Yeah. Salt. Yeah. Nothing's better, man. About a day Hell later, yeah. you show just up carbs, puffy, looking like, like you were drinking all night. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm just eating carbs. That's it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. What, what? Hey, man, you're on a diet. Yeah, what yeah. do you eat? Carbs. Carbs. Just carbs. That's it. Carbs. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't matter how I get them. Just carbs. I found just it sugar. weird, dude. 
I find it very weird. I I think of carbs as like a condiment, like you eat it as a base for something else, right? I saw my brother, he was making pasta for him and his friend, just pasta. And I'm like, are you just, you know, there's no meat, Ooh. there's no substance, well, but, you know But what not mean? macaroni and cheese, but just pasta, like just pasta? See, no, no, with sauce and stuff, but oh. I, even macaroni and cheese, like just put some beef in it, man. I don't know. That's oh, just yeah. Me. See, I do. Like, a, I do like thick macaroni and cheese when the cheese yeah, is but thick. But I do like grilled cheese sandwiches, so that's Yeah, grilled cheese sandwiches without. are delicious. Yeah. If you make them well, my grandmother used to burn them a lot. I don't know if she, maybe she was having mini strokes or something, but they were never truly amazing. But my mom knew how to like put the butter inside the bread and outside the bread and then mm. gold brown gold brown you know just like that really crisp yeah. outside that no black it couldn't if there was any chard my mom would either cut it off because you can taste char even on the parts you can't see you know when you get yeah. a burnt item but she would either slice it that off meal or has some it. finesse yeah you can finesse yeah, that, yeah she was yeah, yeah yeah you oh yeah you can definitely do a lot with a, a little mac and cheese if you know what you're doing you can uh, yeah, mac yeah, and yeah. cheese cheese uh, well cheese as a whole grilled cheese when you have cheese man you can do a lot with it cheese is oh, so it's so, uh, what do you call it? Not volatile, the other word. Like it's, oh, you uh, mean, you know, you uh, can do anything you mean with it. You can do anything versatile, with it. Versatile. Yeah, versatile. It's so yeah. versatile. Yeah. I remember yeah, in, in the past, Renaissance and Dark Ages, they were always talking about turning lead to gold. It's yeah. like, I don't know why they just didn't realize cheese was it. You don't need lead to gold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just corner yeah, the yeah. cheese market because yeah. they, they were you, too focused on bread, man. They, they just, Oh, yeah. Back in the day. Why yeah, are, dude. You make all you do yeah. is get cheese and then put meat in it. And that's your sandwich. Yeah, yeah, no yeah. bread. You're good. Yeah. You don't need yeah. anything. Healthy yeah. as hell. The ACG podcast. Anyway, moving on from there. <laughs> ACG versus Angry Joe. Who wins? Nobody. Because that's Wait, a fight. Why? I don't know. There's probably somebody who Are you likes me or Angry with Joe. No, with Joe. Oh, okay. No, we don't get into it. No, okay. Joe and I, yeah, Joe and I. I don't. I just don't give a fuck about YouTube. Like I just don't yeah, care yeah. about what anybody's saying. I think and with, they're uh, friends with you, right? They're, like yeah, whole, they're, yeah. I was ooh. gonna say Joe, um, um, Delraith, and other Joe mm -hmm. likes B games, so it's right. You know who I haven't talked to, other than I think Alex. he's yeah, he's answer, he's once or twice like uh, responded on a tweet when i've responded on theirs or something but yeah mm -hmm. but he seems cool too i actually like all that group of people yeah, um, yeah, yeah. i love the games two dollar super chat also known as the bug guy says what happened to the star wars eclipse game that's the uh detroit become human that's guys, still being right? made mm -hmm. yeah. that's yeah yeah that's uh what's his name heavy rain guy yeah david yeah. cage david cage, yeah, yeah, david cage. probably He's the cooking. best writer in all the video games yeah, it's very right. contentious very uh very controversial writer for sure. I haven't had a problem with his games, but you know, a lot of people either it's either you hate or you love type yeah. of thing. Yeah, I haven't so, seen a lot yeah. of people have a middle ground on David Cage. It seems yeah, like yeah. it's for the most part people are just really hot on him or not at all that they have issues yeah. with him. It's I don't like Kojima, really know right? why, but yeah, it is like Kojima, except David Cage doesn't have the level of um of indie slash oh. um uh like worked your way up that Kojima has. Kojima's got that story, remember? Like, you know, it reminds me of my days in Japan crying like in, in my slums. room by myself. Yeah. And so I think people resonate to that. And I think David Cage is like, you know, it reminds me of sitting in the mansion with my parents. I don't know what his background is, but I'm just, <laughs> I've never heard people talk about his background. Reminds versus, me of my butler. Get, yeah. Get, reminds get me of when my butler Jeeves passed cheese. away. <laughs> uh, yeah. John D. Gaff says, Outlaws looks good, but I've been done. I'm, I'm done. I've been done. I see. I've been done with pre-ordering for a while with the way the majority of games release at launch. Why pre-order at all? It's a game. I just, just, just wait. You can buy it if it's good. Like reviews come out before the game comes out and you'll just buy it or don't. There's no reason to pre-order. There's no reason to pre-order games. No, not at all. Unless you want like pre-order goodies, like a red Shut sword up, or whatever. Shut up. You're fine. It's a door. Continue. Or, or with this like new trend of like early access pre-order deluxe edition type shit. Yeah. But other than that. You yeah. don't pre-order. And and even then, like those usually you can pre-order after reviews. Oh. Usually there's a day buffer between embargo and games. Just pre-order. I think them. the big thing is, at least from what I've been able to tell, the biggest thing about all of this is the fact that mm -hmm. a lot of people want early access. And mm -hmm. that is something that they obviously know. And that does suck. They they know it's a thing. 
and it seems to, at least for me, be big enough that a lot of people want to jump into a game early. And they're doing three days early for out, uh, Outlaws, right? So, Dude, it's, it's like, smart as fuck, but I hate it so much. But I see what they do, why they do it, and it makes sense. But it's the worst thing in the world because I just love day one of games where everyone's getting into it at the same time together. You know, I hate the early access thing, but it's 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 stupid not are, to do it. They are stealing it from you on that is exactly what they're doing. Is they're stealing it from you on purpose to make sure that you pay for it now. They they yeah. know you like it. Like they yeah. they they used AI to scrape our podcast. They know that you like it and they're just gonna <laughs> misuse that. it. It just, it sucks yeah. because to me that's it, it is one of the best things is getting together with everybody and being like, Okay, we're all gonna get together, we're all gonna we're all gonna talk and play this game like we did with Dragon's Dogma. And if somebody had got it early, it mm -hmm. just wouldn't been it wouldn't have been as enjoyable. But not at all, especially with something like Dragon's Dogma where everyone's having a different experience and it's all communal and it's like, look what I found, look what I found. That would have hurt that game greatly. So yep. Like a game like Elden Ring or Dragon's Dogma or anything that has many secrets. And that's why I don't like uh, a lot of data miners and stuff. I was watching an interview actually with a dev. It was from Escape from Tarkov. And uh, he was he was trying to add these like hidden things like this hidden karma system or whatever the fuck. Into and escape? the look on his face into the game into escape from tarkov yeah and he wanted like a lot of stuff to be in the background hidden and not completely you know known by people but the look on his face when he's like Continue. well data miners will probably you know get to it oh, anyways data miners would it's get just, it early would find it you mean yeah 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 exactly it's just it's 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 so the internet and people on there just the you know it's a slap in the face for a lot of cool shit devs want to do we also had a talk uh, with the, uh, the people behind Dark Tide and uh, how they went about making Vermintide and what their thoughts were um, going from that to making Dark Tide and yeah. adding fun shit that's not meta is just is just hard to do as a dev right now. You either say fuck it or you know you just know that the large majority of people or the people who are going to stick around the game the longest and care about it a lot are just going to use or do the things that are that is optimized and not like the fun stuff that you know is a waste of time or whatever so it's man it's you know it's it's tough it's i would hate tough. to be like a mortal kombat developer and you sit there and you you make your mortal kombat and you get excited because you know, you've got the Xenomorph or whatever, and then somebody data mines that out of your DLC, you know, one of your files. And I've heard people say, oh, why isn't that released? Or why isn't that um, removed prior? But if you understand anything about devs with notes and documentation, that shit's everywhere on purpose. Like, it's yeah. there. It's like, this is a save spot for this. This is a thing that will come in the future. And, you know, sometimes you use the real yeah. word for it. It, it blows <laughs> balls, but it's the way it is. <laughs> You could just be like the remnant devs and just design a class, a hidden class that's designed for data yeah. miners to find. Yeah. <laughs> is that is is that how they figured it out was data miners or at least some yeah, of the yeah. classes was data miners? Yeah, that's yeah, awesome. Yeah. Let's see. IP Gaming says, what's up, ACG? Not much. Oregon Fresh says, never put the grilled cheese on a plate. It gets soggy. Keep it crunchy. Never put the grilled cheese on a plate. What do you do? Do you just walk around with it in your greasy ass fingers? Oregon, you're not making good impressions, man. He's always Does in he here saying the weird shit. Itself on the plate before I, you put it on the bread. I think he means or? like a heathen. You just don't use a plate. You just walk around with you this. Just walk around with the. Yeah. So you're at the bowling alley. Down you're at the bowling the alley. Floor. Switch it over. Yeah. Grab your bowling ball. Lick your fingers. Rub oh. them on your pants. Oh, ah. oh yeah. yeah. So many <laughs> fingers in there. Um, let's see. How are about 180 people here and 28 likes on the stream? It's the way it is, man. People don't like stuff. A couple days like ago. The stream guys. Uh, yeah, like the stream also because I never asked. But um, a couple days ago, we were uh, I was talking to somebody about. So what I've been doing is going in, uh, take this has worked, by the way. This has been fun stuff to go into old videos, remove the shit logos when you used to work with YouTube networks and remove the openings. Sup, everybody. This is Carrick with blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. You know, talk for a while. If you remove those and then remove the ending long lay, uh, uh, logos, your YouTube video, while still sounding old, will actually look newer and get more views. And I did it. I, just, I started about four months ago when somebody had suggested I do this because I have a lot of a lot of videos, older videos in particular. And it's worked. It's actually been awesome. It's been really cool, man, to see. I saw a video or a, com a, a comment pop up about a very old video. And I a lot of times people will say, why do you have a logo on here? Because I used to do, what was the one start with a B? It was like broadband something. And I used to have their logo come up at the starting, you know, because they claimed it and everything. And now it's mine. And so being able to chop it means people who are accustomed to the 15 second 
MTV cuts don't have to sit through the logo at the starting. It's mm -hmm. I, I, I told Lord Cognito about it this week, and I was like, dude, this is actually hugely work. You make them private, do the edit, make them post again. Yeah, YouTube and, has so many tips and tricks and stuff you could get lost in a rabbit hole down there. Yeah, it was awesome, man. It's process, actually it's yeah. been really cool to have people look at old, and they don't know right away. They may know because it's an old game or whatever, but instead of feeling old, because remember those old videos, man, if you crank out and you start looking at a seven-year-old video on YouTube, you're like, this feels different. You know, it feels... Some YouTube people might was, like uh, it, but YouTube was a, was a different time beast. back in 2008, 2007. Yeah. When networks yeah. mattered and shit. Um, <laughs> back to Bug Guy. We don't know what happened, by the way, to Star Wars Eclipse. Seems like it's still going. Bergman says, controversy going on with Bethesda right now. They promised next-gen update for Fallout 4 in 2023. Didn't deliver and have gone quiet. They also broke the OG version. There's no controversy on the lack of data. It's not a controversy. That's just them not giving it. If they broke the OG version and it can't be played, that's not controversy either. That's a fuck up. There's no contra controversy means controversy. Neither one of those have yeah. controversy. It means they screwed yeah. up and they need to fix mm -hmm. it. Absolutely. Uh, let's see. I'm putting rotisserie chicken with a slice of cheese with mayo on a sandwich and then panini press it, ref says. Okay. Okay. Sounds okay. good. With that some mayo good. too? You got you to gotta put some mayo on there, no? Yeah, I'm not going to have a sandwich with no mayo. You yeah, know, that's imagine. like eating sand. Chicken man. sandwich, yeah, dude. Chicken, a, chicken's, you mayo, you need lettuce. Even a good chicken's a little dry, you know? Like, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, I'm a non-Star Wars fan as well, and I have to say mm -hmm. I'm kind of excited for Outlaws. I love Massive. I'm always excited for all their projects. I love them. I, I They're one of my favorite devs, and uh, yeah, I'm very excited. I didn't really watch the trailer. I don't, I don't care to watch, like, story trailers. I just want to experience it in the game. But, yeah. uh, you know, they didn't show gameplay and stuff, so... Agaleta Frank said, had to close uh, the chat to access the like button. This new YouTube interface sucks balls. Yeah. Well, it's one button. Should be too hard. But that probably does suck balls if you can't hit the like button. See, that's YouTube mm -hmm. for you. They don't want feedback in the same way. Uh, removing the dislikes was a bad idea, too. Because yeah, that was a yeah, good yeah. warning to know. For example, AI videos. If you saw a bunch of thumbs down in the, mm -hmm. the first video, the first like comment might say, this is AI and it's just an explainer video. It's bullshit. That'd be nice. But now... You have to add or an instructional extension videos. to it. Instructional yeah. videos, like there were a lot that were just plain wrong or, uh, you know, telling you to download viruses and stuff. And now you can't really, you can't really tell. You, you can't know? tell. Yeah. And you don't know if somebody, well, yeah, you probably don't. I was, I was going to say originally, you don't know if they're bots commenting. And then I was thinking, oh, you probably can. But I've seen mm -hmm. bots do a pretty good job and not to be rude, but I've seen humans do a pretty shit job in YouTube comments. So it's yeah. pretty hard if you ever hear people say like, no, you can definitely tell. I've looked at even my own old comments and been like, mm, "That's a pretty a bad comment." A lot of people are bots. Yeah, in in a but way, Twitter, a lot of people. Bad. Yeah, a lot of people Twitter, are bots. Bad. I mean, if a bot yeah. is only simply regurgitating for some kind of response, then most of us are bots in some way. You see, like five different accounts saying the same exact thing under like a Twitter thread, and you're like, "Okay, what is going on here?" When they say that. Oh, the same word like, or the like same five, like six response different accounts? Yeah, the same exact sentence. Th this I, I get the bots on YouTube that are like, "Hey, my pussy's in my link," kind mm -hmm. of thing. You know, just the it's just constant porn on yeah, anything yeah. I post on uh, yeah. on that. And then on YouTube, almost every time we do a podcast, the first three to four or in, in reviews, well, any video, the first three to four posts will be these gratuitous misuses of AI. They'll be like. Mm -hmm. How do you work so consistently at integrating with your audience across this vast network of videos? And you're all, oh my God, just remove, <laughs> remove. And then the real people pop up. It's an yeah, odd yeah. situation. Even man. then, I'm fucking sick of OnlyFans girls everywhere, dude. Just fucking leave me Damn. alone, dude. I do not want to masturbate. That sucks. I was just going to launch my OnlyFans today. Oh, uh, shit. Well, you know, I'll make an but exception But I'm an OnlyFans guy, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, somebody said, so any impressions on the triple I? Is there any? Uh, uh, there was some flintlock I didn't data. Watch it. Flintlock. flintlock? Uh, yeah, flintlock. Um, Turim in Discord said that there was flintlock data. Is that supposed to be uh, like a survival MMO, like a survival looter? Which one looter? is flint? Flintlock is the... not. No, no, no. That. It's the single player. It's the Forspoken. It, yeah, not Forspoken. Right. It looks kind of like Forspoken, like the world and stuff. And uh, but you have a piss. You have a flintlock, mm -hmm. right? And there's some magic or something. Yeah. But you have a flintlock, thus the name. Yeah. That's why we need to make a game just called Shotgun. I thought that was a Microsoft thing. Wasn't that a Game Pass thing too, Flintlock? I think that's day one on Game Pass. I might be wrong, but uh, or or they just revealed it on a, on a Microsoft. They might have revealed it on. Yeah, I don't know yeah. what's going on with that because um, 
these games take a lot longer to release, and then by that time, the companies drop them. Because the other game that got dropped was, um, uh, I did uh, on the April, the one that's, it's about, it's the stealth game. And it looks um, like a like third-person stealth game. No, but it got removed. Xbox originally was going to do it. Raw Fury is publishing. When Raw Fury dropped this game, Xbox also dropped the game. So it's not an, even though it was announced as Xbox, um, the developers, the game didn't come out yet. And I think there were some issues with development. You know, it's just not ready. I, and I just want stealth games. When everybody left. Yeah. yeah. No shit. Fuck. Uh, first OnlyFans post. ACG slowly removing his hat. Uh, that would make millions. A, it, it would make about $11. Dude, <laughs> come on. People pretend no something's sponsored. a big deal. It's not. No. I've found that out on YouTube enough times. Where people, like, people, like, no sponsored. People be like, dude, I love that you're no sponsored. They'll be like, well, if you want to come into the Discord for five bucks, ah, I, don't, I don't like it that much. And you're all, okay, mm -hmm. dude. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of people who just talk a big game. And then you're all, yeah, yeah put, put five bucks up and jump. Oh, well, you know, uh, I got this, got this cancer fucking medication I got to buy. <laughs> um, just spent another 120 on Steam. They've gotten 20,000 from me. I don't know what that means. 20,000 full dollars from you? Oh, you tracked your money maybe in Steam? Can you do that without? I wonder if there's an app. Oh, for yeah, there's a your yeah, library? Steam DB. Yeah, you can go to Steam DB and, 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 and see a rough estimate of how much you've spent over yeah. like your whole account life, lifetime. Let's see. Somebody says that somebody's uh, botting Steam reviews already. I don't know what game that's for. Sorry. But that sucks. I mean, botting Steam reviews goes negative, too. It's hard to know on Steam. That's why the thumbs up, thumbs down don't work as well as just a person giving an honest to God. Like, these are my full thoughts. Not just this is bad, this is good, but like, boom. But for user reviews, I like it better than the numbering system because people rate tens or zeros. They go the extremes, right? If they love it, it's a 10. If they don't like it, it's a zero or a two. That's why or I use the Word Cloud app that Reg showed me um, on for Steam. Ooh, okay. So it does, for it, you, see, yeah, you see the score and then you see the Word Cloud of it takes all the top. Uh, the, it's either the last or the top positive and negative, one of the two. And then it gives you a word cloud of the biggest words. Like That's cool. So when I see Chinese translation, I'm Immersive. just like, I don't care. But it, yeah, I go over yeah. here and it's like, you know, crashes or bugs or malware. Then you're like, oh, that's a big deal. Multiple people are talking about that's it. That's a very good idea. Uh, let's see. Dragon's Dogma addicted 60 hours in one week, Brian says. Yeah, Dragon's Dogma. Yeah, Despite the issues that it very legitimately has, that game, it's, it's, uh, pure fun is yes, it's it's flawed, but it's it's deeply special to me. This game, uh, I don't even want to finish it. It's just really know, fun. It is I a game. Like the, <laughs> yeah, I don't want to finish it. I want it to stay there for me to come back when I want to play it. I I just don't want to finish it. Maybe in, you know, I don't I don't want to beat it. I don't want to. I don't want to beat it, man. But you know that the, uh, <laughs> it, you know that yeah, if you yeah, do know. other stuff occurs, right? Yeah, I've heard about stuff. I don't know exactly yeah. what, but uh, I just <laughs> it's 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 a very special game to me. Let, you know, I'll just I, say I, this: I in one night, I had eighteen different people saying, "Oh my god, are you kidding?" At the end of Dragon yeah. Song Two, yeah. God damn it, yeah, yeah, uh, including Johnny Void, um. A, a, a guy who doesn't post very much, A something, he came into our Discord just to say that. He's like, I don't post very much, but holy shit. So, dude, it's, Let, it's, it's, um, going from that game to other games. I just, I love games that add a lot of momentum to your character. I keep talking about Super Mario 64 on the podcast, but that was, is one of the best platformers because of the momentum and what you could do with it. And Dragon's Dogma had a realistic type of, not re I, realistic as a, I hate that word now, but it's, uh, it has some sort of momentum that increases kind of a skill cap to just movement itself and when you go from that to another game you just feel like oh it kind of doesn't have this weighty kind of you know push so it's it's hard going to other games from it yeah i can see that i think it's just hard going to other games because i just it's fun i don't really have yeah, a lot of combat. detailed i don't have a lot of detailed description of why it's just really fun. <laughs> yeah um let's see uh Turn off, turned, turned off says it would be cool to just say like out, like the video out loud and boom, it likes a video. Do that with voice attack. Probably do it. Like ACG's video. Um, turn off also says I follow a thread of underground musicians and literally all of them have AI music vids now. It's lazy, bruh. 
It's lazy, bro. It's lazy, bro. Lazy. Well, sort they probably of. Uh, underground. They probably don't have the funding to make an actual music video. Why wouldn't you want them to like put something to show? I believe it was Unleash the Archers did that as well uh, recently, mm -hmm. where they paid a artist to make art that they, the they and the artist put together to make an AI video, which was pretty mm -hmm. intelligent way to do it. Yeah. I mean, I've seen some crap videos, too. It's a little bit like I was joking. Um, you know, I saw a voice actor on Twitter who I really like their stuff, but they said there's no chance AI can have the heart, the passion, the unbelievable performances of the voice work of actors. And I was like, I have reviewed games that you are full of actors. shit that are yeah, terrible. So... I'm not have even fighting for AI, Fox but it's and, like and, the more you line up. Yeah, yeah. The more you put your foot down on that, the more you're like, ah, but. But, but I get I get the general I I do get the actual thought process. Cause series two dollars have a good one, folks. Thanks for the podcast. Thank you very much. IP Gaming says ACG sends Outlaws coming out on August. Do you think AC Red will be released around November? I don't know, man. Ubisoft. AC you know, Red hasn't even had a single announcement uh, yeah. for. I believe Red is 2025, because Outlaws is coming out in August. And I, I don't thought even know, Ubisoft they said there just, was separation. Doesn't you know, do they could release PR well. three games in a week. True. And not give a fuck. Uh, <clears throat> let's see. Brian Croc says, make sure you do not start a new game plus. Uh, blah, 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 blah. I'm not going to read the rest for Dragon's Dogma. But that is correct, what you just wrote. Yeah, make sure you make sure you... Make sure you keep a keen eye on what's being said to you at the end of Dragon's Dogma. And he says... We love you, Carrick. Not everybody does. Some people are probably here just to be dicks, but I appreciate that, and I think you probably do. I'm waiting on the ghost of Tsushima, tim 2 go Joe says. The Last of Us was such a shit port. The Last of Us was, but they've been pretty good with ports. Right? I love they've how, had okay. too bad, Sorry. I think. Yeah. Too bad? What were we going to say? No, there was just something. So, um, time to go Joe... Wait, no, was it him? Yeah, yeah, so you're waiting on a sale for DD. They were so sleazy with the microtransactions and pricing schemes, but you're, can't, you need a new Resident Evil, you just beat Village. But th doesn't Resident Evil have worse microtransactions yeah. than Dragon's Dogma? It does. Yeah. Way worse. Way worse. What was, what was actually weird about the Dragon's Dogma one was um, now that we've got past it, there was a lot of lies about it. There was also yeah. not the upfront information on it. So there was a, a double thing that happened on both sides. But what was really weird about that one was that the huge number of people who were okay with it in one game and not with the other. And it it's definitely a case of pretending, you know, that Robin Peter to pay Paul, you didn't steal money from somebody. You certainly did. It was a did. performance. And it was, yeah, the... it was, a lot of it was a performance. Yeah, it was. Yeah, and by the yeah. way, it was also incorrect data up front that should have been like more talked about. Yeah, there was a lot of misinformation. But I mean, yeah. I saw I, I saw a reviewer actually state you can buy all these as many times as possible when you legitimately could not. And I was like, no, you can't. Like, it doesn't mm -hmm. matter if you're going to put something to refute something. Why lie again? The world's not flat. I'll tell you that is correct. The world is not flat. It's triangular. And you're like, dude, what? You had all that time to fix the actual people who are complaining about something and you turn around and fucking lied anyway. So it was a, it was a really big me mess up on their part for how they did it. And the one bothers me a little bit more, weirdly enough, the one purchase, because I'm like, well, isn't that a double, double blind, like poker play of saying, well, you can only get one Dude, and the, a person the saying, well, maybe I'll just buy one. Cause I can only get one. I, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, that's true. And and the micros, the, the micros and Dragon's Dogma are so incredibly useless that I, I, it feels to me that it's just a way to be like, hey, Capcom, look, we have microtransactions in this game because they're unbelievably useless. Yeah. yeah. Completely it's just a lot. It, it's useless. just a lot of pretending that one thing exists and the other doesn't, or being like, well, these were better than this one. You could I, buy I, red orbs in Devil May Cry Five. Dude, like, I saw people up. complaining that, about the fast travel in Dragon's Dogma, not knowing that that was the fast travel in Dragon's Dogma One. And you're like, <laughs> yeah. all right, we're we've lost it. I mean, it, it, I think what all it proves, I think everybody can just agree that we don't like microtransactions, but they're there forever. At all. They're not going away. Yeah. Ever. No. It's done. No. You've lost that war. Now you have to figure out how to like. It's been a decade. attrition. But it's yeah, yeah, it's done. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. it's it's over. It's like trying to fight AI. There's, it's done. 
We just I've have to figure out how this. to mitigate the damage of it. We've talked about this so many times, even on the podcast, where we were like, dude, microtransactions are only bad if the game is bad or if they have another problem with the game. Because, you know what I mean? Most True. of the time. Most of the time. Uh, because a lot of shit, like Monster Hunter, everybody loves Monster Hunter. Have you seen the microtransactions for that game? But the, but to be fair, to be fair, Capcom uh, doesn't really advertise those microtransactions anywhere in game. Like in yeah. Dragon's Dogma, there's no shop in game or in Resident Evil. If you open up the shop vendor or whatever, you don't see like a hey microtransactions right here. You know what I mean? So they do a pretty good job at separating. I didn't even know about microtransactions in Dragon's Dogma until I saw the reviews. I didn't know the they big existed. problem. Is that, as somebody just said, man, the big problem is when you add on performance issues on top of it, that is, I mean, yeah, it's like, it's just, it, if you can hold up the triangle a little bit with the gameplay and let's say you had better performance, the discussion becomes different, man. But when you hit yeah. on all three sides with an issue, you're just like, it, you can't even have a discussion about it because people are just going to, they're, you know, everybody wants to put their foot down on something rightfully. So there's nothing actually yeah. wrong with that. And it, mm -hmm. it sucks as a discussion. It's uh, And the same thing happens. I remember bringing it up in past games and no one cared because that game was popular. Just no one cared. And it definitely taught me that... Um, it sort of taught me that there's really no way to... I mean, it's like saying that there's no sponsors. They, it, people will talk a big game, but there is a good number of people who do not care at all. And you're not speaking to them in any way, shape, or form. You can moralize and be like, well, here, let me describe to you why they're not in there. And those people may have heard it a thousand times, and they still legitimately do not care. And yeah, yeah, that's yeah. probably the majority of gamers. But it's definitely, mm -hmm. it's def the big thing for me is performance. Because when you add Dragon's Dogma's entire reason for being is an action game, and luckily... The performance issues aren't during the action, but they are in Luckily. the city where there's some quests and it's like doubly bad because it's an action game. You want to mm -hmm. you want a locked in like it, if if those performance issues switched and the city ran perfectly and the game mm -hmm. when you were out and about ran that poorly. I don't know if anybody who would rate it that high at all. They would have all just been yeah. like, nope. But you also get that thing now where everybody wants every single part to be good and uh at least for yeah. me, I have not had the experience that many gamers seem to have, which is mm -hmm. the perfect game. It's every yeah. time I talk to people, there's this magical, perfect experience they've had in a game that I I don't think I've ever experienced. Where it's like me every neither. single thing always perfectly lines up in all in all ways, performance, control, gameplay, story, and and it's not a small. I said one game. But from a lot of people that I get feedback from, it sounds like they've played thousands of these. And I'm like, I've been unlucky in that every one of the things I've loved, every single game that I love that I put on a pedestal, all had some issue that was pretty bad. Like there was, whether people, it be voice acting or, you know, what have you. We've talked about this with Starfield as well. Uh, it's happening with Dragon's Dogma. Sometimes I see it where it's, uh, they compare the story of that to like Witcher or something. <laughs> but they, 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 they don't. They don't like think about all the other stuff the game is doing, right? Like I don't play Dragon's Dogma for the story, right? And we talked about this in Starfield where it's like, well, look at the dialogue in Cyberpunk, but then you can be like, oh, is it as dynamic, blah, blah, blah. So people or 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 oh look in No Man's Sky, you can do this and that. But but they don't see the full picture of things, right? They only go like they only take a select few things. It's like if this game did it, why can't this other game did it uh do it? It's just where the devs, I think, uh aligned their their scope and what they wanted to do. It's weird. The best thing I like is when I look at all these and I see how long they've lasted, and you, you consistently get people saying all of the same stuff. They don't matter or they matter. Um, this is the way devs need to do things to make money. And, oh, devs just need to make perfect games all the time. Um, we're, it's all over. It's going to end gaming. It's been said for 20 years. It feels to me like people don't really understand that every industry has pretty much got the same stuff going on. We can talk yeah. about something that was said yesterday, which blows my mind, which was the Embracer guy stated $70 games are, are going to revert back to 60. And I was like, dude, that would be the first industry in human history to revert back. In it, would, it was the dumbest one-liner, but it wasn't all he said. See, that also bothered me because this is what happened with... Uh, Remember there was the, there was a big quote from a CEO where people were saying he said something crazy like I, it wasn't single player games are dying but it was something along those lines and I remember in our Discord somebody posted and I was like uh 
I bet you that's not real. I bet you that person didn't just say that. That was a clip. And somebody took a clip from something, and we went and listened. That's sort of the way this was said, where it was like, uh, you know, $70 games are going away. What he really meant was a lot of the big games that we expect, the AAA games that could cost 70 might go to the 60 might take a step down in quality or in length or what have you, and that people are going to continue to utilize 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. So what he really meant to say was nothing. Because what yeah. he said was a sentence that was so, it was, it was earth is narrow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like, what? But it was during yeah, yeah. a particular discussion where somebody asked him. That's the other thing. Yeah. I've heard people say, why did this guy even say this? Because they did an interview and the person asked. What yeah. are you going to say? I have no comment. You know what? No comment would get you right now. If you said, if somebody oh, yeah. like to invite me on a podcast, to speak. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'd uh, yeah. prefer not to speak on that. People would be like, then that means something, oh, baby. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's yeah, yeah. 10 times there's, uh, worse. <laughs> there's also, the new mo the other pay payment models or the other, for example, live service games releasing at 40 or whatever, you know, even mm -hmm. by AAA doves or I think that's what smart. have you. I, I yeah. love the idea of a $40, like, if you're going to have live service, well, live service isn't even really what I meant. I shouldn't have said it because live service can mean fucking a million things. But let's yeah, say everything. if it's going to have yeah. some micros of some kind or something mm -hmm. there always online, you know, which sucks. I'm not, I'm not talking about single player. They should never have that. Then I think mm -hmm. a $40 price point really does change everybody's grade. Because even though Travis, when he was on the podcast, he was like, well, we don't take money into account. It's like, but I've seen posts where later or when you even if you don't say it in your review there'll be somebody who says compare to the competition and then the five games listed are 60 dollars games so just because you didn't say doesn't mean you didn't do and yeah. we all compare those i think 40 helps the comparison 40 dollars helps man if you told me it was 40 dollars and it might have some micros I mean, I'm not saying I would ignore the grinding issues, but it helps because it does sort of seem like they realize it. And there is something nice about somebody meeting you halfway and saying, we get it. Yeah. We're going to offer yeah. you, even if the game isn't, you know, in any way really noticeable. We've seen a lot of games at 40 be phenomenal, too. Like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We've seen games at 10 be phenomenal. We've also seen games Hellblade at 10 was suck like that, balls. Right? Yeah. Hellblade, Hellblade was around 40, 50. Yeah. Hellblade was a really good price, I feel. One time through, blah, blah, blah. And... Hellblade Just, and the other like, one, the French one. Plague Tale. Yeah. Those games were like, oh, yeah, Plague Tale Innocence. Quality. Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. 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 Close to AAA. Right? Yeah. Close to AAA. I mean, the production value was insane, but they were short or like tiny scope, right? Yeah. For sure. Let's see what else. The stars aligned for me uh, for my pedestal game Aliens Dark Descent. Is that the. Um... I don't even know what to say to that. Strategy? That is Our crazy cakes. Yeah. So that, Isn't that the strategy one? Where so when I reviewed like a couple... Man, I, maybe I thought I would ago. like it. I got it. It was part of a Humble Bundle or something. I for, uh, But but it was weird. The way you control them, they, they, they move as a unit. I guess that's that's cool, but I, I, I was hoping for something more like a, like a Commandos or like a, you know, Shadow. Shutter, and he says, I don't understand the people, how they could so blatantly downgrade a game released a decade ago and people will still lap it up. I don't know what game he's talking about. Downgrade? But um, let me tell you, in 10 years, a lot of fucking, a lot of new people, a lot of new people, man. True. I don't know. True. I don't know if people just don't understand how sex works, but 10 years old is two years after somebody may have got their first console. This is the only industry that I know of. That it is very possible for somebody to be 16 or 17 and not to have actively experienced it as well. Yeah. Because yeah. of parents being against games or not having a game console in the house. This is the really legitimately the first one. So a person who's 15 or 16 might get a state of decay too, let's say. And we see Days Gone and we're like, oh, look at the two. Days Gone, better graphics, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, that's their first that's their first experience with like there is no there is no vested history of hatred that the rest of us have that you know we're not just sitting up there hog tying our fucking developers that we dislike some of those people are brand new at it and luckily their parents are fucking and it seems like a lot of people don't understand how sex works it bothers me a lot yeah, even older people like i managed to get through was it 15 years of no spoilers for mass effect until i played the remastered I know. Uh, version Dude, you were lucky <laughs> so i was you very lucky. lucky yeah 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 very lucky time to go says i haven't played the plague tale 2 but i i've owned it forever you're gonna miss out man
But still got let's talk about good well. stuff. Let's ignore this yes. kind of shit. Let's talk about good stuff. That was a that was yes. a rant, and I apologize um, to no one. Let's talk about so Embracer recovered AAA. There wasn't much going on, but I do want to talk about Star Wars Outlaws. So there's two things I saw. Okay, let's get the one thing out of the way. Uh, yes, they apparently upside down her eyes. That is something. If you look at the model in real life and you look at her, there's distinct. It looks actually like an error on the curvature of her eyes. I just know because I've actually seen that actress before. So I did notice that uh, it was brought up multiple times. People were like, "Well, that what's going on? Like that looks a little a little different on that." Ignoring that, in the same way I ignored it in Control, I think Star Wars Outlaws looked very enjoyable. But I would love to see more than the trailer showed. The trailer mm -hmm. was once again the it wasn't the fake CGI, Ubisoft, yeah. but it was yeah. There's a lot of CGI. There was some there was some gameplay in there with that. We're going to show them roll like they do in Assassin's Creed Mirage trailers or something. Yeah. And you, you just yeah, see yeah. like a third camera zoomed out, altered. It looks like you're taking a picture without of Far UI Cry. And stuff. Yeah, yeah like without that. UI and stuff. Right. But, dude, I'm excited for it, man. It's massive. It's They know what they're doing. I'm excited for it. Me too. You know, you're, I'm very you are? excited. I'm extremely excited for it. I, I, I'm not even the biggest Star Wars fan at all. Um, and uh, especially not... You know, if, if it's something like Old Republic, obviously I'd be super ecstatic about the world, but I just love Massive and they they haven't let me down yet. They always have amazing world building, amazing level design. Level design is probably my favorite thing by them and really, really good gun, gun play. So I'm excited to see how their take on, you know, laser guns Star and stuff Wars like that. and laser guns. Yeah, yeah. I'm a, I'm a little tentative on the, like, they haven't shown much about open world or open hub and they've explained that this will be at least through general discussion, they have explained that it's probably going to be their smallest open slash hub slash game world, which does disturb me because of Star Wars. And I've mentioned that, mm -hmm. so get it out of the way. It's weird to say that about Star Wars. Be like, this can go anywhere, but we're not going to let you go anywhere. So yeah. I want to see if it's like um, uh, the other one, Outer Worlds. If it, you know How big are the hubs? What can you do in the hub? There was a scene in this trailer where she's sitting on that speeder bike thing and it looking mm -hmm. over a, a, a looking over like a field slash plateau little river. And I was thinking to myself, that's probably a perfect opportunity for them to show the size of the hub location. Or maybe it's yeah. just a few, you know, places near the spaceport or what have you. I, I, I just want to know exactly what we're how we're going to engage with the game, because I actually don't know yet. There was a fight inside of. In that first trailer, there's a fight inside of a little spaceport, looked like division, some stealth, but it's and some travel. That is true. They showed her on the speeder bike traveling, but it's like I, I need to know: is it locked down? We saw other speeder bikes on the left because I broke down that video, and I think that's great. But I just want to know how big it is so I can know what systems are going to be running. Because if it's super yeah, small, you won't have any yeah. systems running. If it's yes. somewhat mid, you might have some AI. That's exactly what I want to you know. know. I don't want. I don't care for the map size or whatever that much right. what i care more about is if it's going to be a sandbox if there's going to be a sandbox or if it's exactly just a narrow scope where you get side quests and quests like are you going to be able to live out a bounty hunter simulation with emergent things or you know a radiant quests or whatever and just work as a bounty hunter is it going to have like a i'm not saying to the detail of red dead but like a red dead style thing outside the main story we know the mm -hmm. main story is really tight but maybe you could just you know be in the world rather than Go through it and complete it. Yeah, I want yeah. to know those details for sure. Because Division, have you gone into the end game in Division Two? <laughs> yeah, in Division Two, not or in just Division Two, but not one recently. Two. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. They just have a million things going on, and obviously, this is after a couple updates and stuff. But maybe they're comparing it to that, where you know their previous games, they they just have a lot, a ton of content that can last you hundreds of thousands of hours. Versus... It's possible, but Division's entire function is based around all the factions and gangs being against each other. And I feel like, yeah. sorry, I had to move my camera. And I feel like with Star Wars, it seems like there's little sectioned off areas that might be under the uh, the Empire's control, might be under Rebel control, might be under a gang's control because they've talked, it's going to have a lot of gang stuff. I just don't understand if it's going to be absolute anarchy like Division would be on a Star Wars world. I feel like that would be weird. It would be like Moss Eisley's, but with just a consistent gunfire of you running around. That, see, that's where I can't tell what the game is. Is it trying to be Division Light? Is it trying to be Far Cry Light? Is it trying to be both of them Medium? Yeah. I just need yeah, to yeah. see what the game fucking is, I guess. I, I think yeah, that's yeah. it. Is we're it just does not seem seeing. to have 
a way identity more cohesive. crisis maybe to me yeah that too i uh, just in terms of uh story it, it does seem to have yes. a way more cohesive you know there's like yep. characters and stuff like that and division it was just lore right they're World doing the opposite more. i think of what far of avatar did Avatar mm -hmm. was more open world with the generalization of you, the side character, and yeah, some stuff happened. Just go shoot yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. And this seems to be more like, here's a story, but I'm going to make a comparison that I truly actually do believe. I yeah. believe there's a very high chance a lot of Beyond Good and Evil 1 and 2's development have rubbed off on this game. Because there are yeah. times when I see this game, it reminds me of how Beyond Good and Evil w number one was. With these locations you could explore, and then you went to places to do missions. And there's a lot yeah. in it where I'm like, oh, you know what? That's only because I played that one somewhat recently. But it does feel, you know, maybe a home base, which is your ship. We know that now because um, on the Ultimate Edition, you can get a special skin for the interior ship. that They called it like a... I, I can't remember, but it appears to be like a mini base, that kind of stuff. So it's like a millennial yeah, cool. Falcon thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Millennium. But Millennial Falcon is by far a better name. That would be the Millennial yeah. Falcon. It doesn't <laughs> go very fast, but it doesn't go slow. It doesn't win the it's Kessel entitled. Run, but it shows up. The Millennial yeah, yeah, Falcon. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I'm going to go to the Kessel Run. Are you going to win? Nah, but I'll be here. I'm Just give me an award. Starbucks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the Millennial I, Falcon I is now my favorite thing. <laughs> I do hope there's a lot of there's a, a lot of systems like kind of a little bit of a longevity to it because there's not many. I mean, it's a bounty hunter simulator. I hope so. I hope it is because, you know, most Star Wars games is a just like a lightsaber kind of story game. So yeah, yeah, they're getting rid of that. You know, it's just going to be the the Star Wars like gangs doing their thing, which I think will be yeah. cool. But yeah, now yeah, I just yeah. want the Millennial Falcon, just a really laid back. It's like yeah, I don't really I I don't like competition. I'm like you know. I don't want to win yeah. at Scrabble. I, I, you know, find me a job. ACG, the best. Thanks for doing the Wednesday podcast. This is Hunter. Thank you very much. Uh, let's see. Collect 500 truggets. I don't know what that means. Abel says, I'll put it on sale. Most Star Wars games go dirt cheap. Not only that, uh, most Star Wars games do go cheap, but also Ubisoft has their consistent plan for dropping prices. This is something that we've known. It has nothing to do with the... Um, quality of the game we've seen their games that have scored 90 percent still do the same thing and that's they have a very specific downward curve of their sales and i think avatar dropped within a month it's usually within one to two months you'll see a drop and then a rise and then a drop they really know how to game the system because you know it's going to go up so when it goes down if you want it you get it on the first down and then if it goes up and you can't get it you're waiting for it to go down it, the, those guys know their they're sales. They're the opposite they, of Nintendo. Yeah, they're opposite of Nintendo. Who's just like, <laughs> yeah. price? What's always price? Yeah. It's always <laughs> blood. There will be blood. Plus, for some reason, way more tax than any other game. It's just <laughs> tax yeah. to hell and back. Yeah. yeah, those games are rough, man. I mean, their yeah. cost is sometimes just mind-blowing. Uh, uh, Nick, Nick Hill Pie, if I'm saying that right, says, as I'm growing older, I'm finding myself more drawn to lighter, shorter experiences that can be played episodically in a limited time available. I wouldn't mind a non-open world game with Outlaw. I think you're in good shape because I believe, so, okay. I feel like some of that talk is about what's happening. Though. We got to talk about this, though. People who are saying, oh, my God, Horizon is too big, for example. The, you know, I can't possibly beat this game. Dude, I mainlined the the Zero Dawn in, what, like a couple days? It's such a short game. You know, content, there's optional content for people who do have more time to do the optional content, but everyone's super hardwired on getting like platinum. I'm not saying what this, uh, it's what this guy is saying, but a lot of people are just, I've seen uh, around online, they're super hardwired to like complete every single thing in the game and get the platinum. And that's what the game is, that they wouldn't accept like a big game with a lot of optional stuff. But if you want a shorter experience, you can just mainline it or do, you know, just some side quests instead of everything and, and every collectible. You know what I mean? Because big games are short if you want them to be. A lot of them are. I mean, doesn't that show a, a almost creepy level of self interest, though? How if so? somebody, well, when if somebody's like this doesn't cater directly to me perfectly, that to me is main character syndrome on that person's side. That person's got severe main character syndrome. So if somebody yeah, says I mean, this I, game's too big yeah. for me, um, mm -hmm. I'm like, I don't care. It has nothing mm -hmm. to do. I mean, it's too big for you, so you've chosen what have you. Why are you calling out what has existed in humanity for two hundred thousand years, which is a barter system yeah. for for worth? You know what it's worth. It's like it is what it is. It's too big for you. Okay, 
it doesn't necessarily always mean that you can rush it, like you said, but you can. You can rush that one. There's some you can't, but I don't know why there's a... And it might be attached to achievements and stuff like that, but there is definitely an overabundance of you should care about what I'm saying. And even as a reviewer, I'm saying that. That's why I always say go make sure you don't just watch one person's. It just seems weird that people want everything catered perfectly to them and their little tiny their little tiny thing. It's just odd. It's really it's like, odd. Oh, it's this really game's odd too big for me. Okay. Okay. I mean, isn't that what's happened since the moment you were born? But at the same this time, music they complain is too about... raw for me. This yeah. jam is not good enough for me. It's just it's weird. It's weird. I don't know. At the same time, they complain about games that are being made for everybody and losing a lot of soul or whatever because they're just, you know, very generic because they're trying to appease the maximum amount of people. So if you do want games to be more focused, then they're going to upset some people. Some people are not going to you know, gel with it. But but especially now online, people want everyone to agree on the same thing, right? Everyone wants... I guess, I guess that's where... Like, it's sort of what I was saying was it is weird. It's not that it's weird that somebody has that because we all have it. We are all main characters. I was going more along the lines with that where they want agreement. They want yeah. agreement for their point. And it's like, dude, what... I mean, you know, like what exactly... Instead, I find that most people gather together in groups with the same likes. You have your Star Wars yeah. friends. You have Bubbles. your long game friends. You have your Milsim friends. I don't try to tell my Milsim friends about fucking Pokemon or Sims 4. That would be ridiculous. Yeah. I'd have to be yeah. a fucking idiot to do that. But for whatever reason, that does creep out in other places. I might, they might say, what am I playing? I say Sims 4. If they say, why are you playing it? I'll be like, well, weirdly enough, I may not look like it, but it's one of my favorite games. And maybe they want to play it, but it would be very odd for me to waste a lot of their time and like, whoa, 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 we got to stop Arma because I got to explain to you why Sims 4 is the best game. It's like, dude, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. Wrong group. Yeah. Like, wrong. Yeah. you're reading the room wrong. I don't know. It's just, it's a, it's an odd one. But it's fun when, when those types of, you know, worlds collide where some of your Melsim friends, that is you awesome. see them enjoying, you know, you yep. see the Viva Pinata or something and you're like, whoa, dude, yo. I think a lot of people were surprised when, like, I was talking about Sims 4 being, or Sims, not Sims 4, but Sims being my favorite game because I didn't look like it. And it's like, I don't know, man, maybe I lived in a different world, but a lot of the people that didn't look like something were the ones that were doing something. It's a girlfriend I mean, game. It's, it's, yeah. It's yeah. A, it's just, yeah, it's yeah. just like, it's such a weird thing to say. It's like, you don't look, okay, whatever, you know, but anyway, about the Sims. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's see. I just think it's unnecessary to have grindy padding. It's a design flaw. Make a game, man, and try to fix it and see if every single person agrees that uh, your game doesn't have game padding. Because, man, that would be rough to make a game. Bet you no matter what I put, I'd put a timer on my main menu so when you hit it, it took 10 minutes to load the game. Grind that bitch. Spit. Dude, you could actually get extra engagement time on your game if you made the main menu take a long time to load up. Is it called padding when you don't enjoy the content that's being delivered? And those like yeah. padding periods. That's that's yeah. when it's called. Padding, I mean, and there's right? there's genuine padding but we all like, sort yeah. that everybody sort Final of fence. agrees upon. Like, yeah, yeah. But the weird thing is, is um, most people that I know, they have different levels of padding that they're okay with before calling it mm -hmm. padding in the negative way. And then mm -hmm. there's also the idea of um, there's a game with no padding, Tetris. That's a game with no padding. It is just Tetris, yeah. right? But then after yeah. that, oh, then you're grind getting into, into the, level nine. Yeah, but then you're getting into the weeds. Well, padding's different yeah. than grind. But I'm talking about true padding. It's a yes. gameplay mechanic. Boom! It's this. This is the like, way it is. Like moving boxes very slowly in Final yeah. Fantasy. Yeah. In Final yeah. Fantasy. Then then and then you get every instance in between. And I mean, you know, apparently everybody's made a game, including myself. You know, there's been times where I've bitched about stuff where I still feel it. But I do get why Dev might have done it. You know, I've had devs explain something later and be like, "Well, we did it this way," and I'm all, "All right, whatever." I didn't like it. It's like but. a, it's it's like a science to find the perfect kind of flow and how to stop, not stop players, but kind of give them little tiny breaks and what works and what doesn't. Uh, you know, you don't want to be always. You don't want to have high highs the whole time because high highs. You absolutely be high highs do without not. The lows, you do right? not. Yeah, so there's it's, there's it's very something to be said it, about it is having. A science. A, a lull. There's something in yeah. movies and everything. We've seen it before where a movie doesn't have a lull and you're like, this is numb, man. This is like, yeah, yeah, yeah. there's just too much going on. Um, I would hate to make a game because what I would want 
or I wouldn't hate to make a game. What I would want to do is make a game purely for me. And then if other people in the world, I would call the game. It's for me. Right. Yeah. And just be like, this yeah, game, yeah, it's yeah. for me. It's and then that me. way Designed if you jump me, in. Made for me. Yep. I'm like, dude, you be, because what I like is very specific. And I know that that doesn't mean I'm in, in any way unique because there's going to yeah. be thousands upon th thousands of people who may who may like it. But uh, we do get companies trying to ca ca cater to everybody with whether it be the characters, whether it be the way the actions, the easiness of a button, every button or A does everything. And then the people who like to have a little bit of complexity or discreteness between A and B button are like, what are you doing? You got the button right, which Dragon's Dogma had that, where the B button was run, the B button was Oh my God, that B, B button. button was fun. And you're just like, dude, what are you doing? Game. Yeah, it was, That's it was worse than microtransactions, worse than performance. It was pretty that messed was the up, part of the game. <laughs> it was pretty yeah, messed it's up. like, oh, you want to talk to this guy? You better run instead. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, let's see. Gary says, I don't even think that it's the plat. I feel people just n feel the need to do the optional stuff. Yeah. Yeah, true. I, I, I do too. There's I a, there's both, a weird both. OCD thing. Why not? Yeah, both? weird OCD thing for sure. I get it too. But like when I was able to overcome it and be like, hey, let me just mainline something or I don't want to do. When you say no to a quest, you feel very empowered. You feel like an independent human you know what i mean you're like yes i just turned down this quest that wanted me to get a fucking frying pan from the depths of hell i don't want to do it for you say no say no to quest givers okay you don't have to say yes that is way more weight than i give any game dude <laughs> come on i've never i love that it's like i <laughs> oh man my spiel man it's you know i'm trying yeah, to empower that's, people yeah out there. That, well, that's a lot i mean I don't know if it's real empowerment, but it certainly sounds good. I would yeah, say with yeah. those games, you know, the platinum, the um, here's 10 of something, you've done eight, certainly speaks. Yeah. But what I do find weird, man, is that there's a lot of people, including myself who've done this or what have you, where that not only does bother them, they don't engage with it. And then you have people mm -hmm. where it bothers them in one game and then doesn't bother them in another. And yet they won't admit it. And I do have friends like that where I'll be playing. A, they'll bring up something. I'll be like, you do realize that the game you just got done playing does identical stuff. And you have to talk them off this odd narrative ledge to finally figure out that they were making an excuse for the fact that they're different games. And they delivered mm -hmm. things in a different way, just like movies. Uh, for example, I like um, I don't like Westerns much, but there's three or four I love. I like mm -hmm. sci-fi, but there's about 300 I dislike. Why? Oh, because yeah. the sample set is different. One mm -hmm. has a ton of something I enjoy with a couple that I don't or with a bunch that I don't because I've had a sample set that's larger. With Westerns, I don't seek them out. But the occasional ones I do or have seen that I have liked, they're higher in my list. So when I talk about movies, for instance, I never say this is a Western. I'll say, I really like Dances with Wolves. Now, most mm -hmm. people know what I'm talking about, but it is or Tombstone. But it is weird that people forget their sample set. So mm -hmm. It, it, it can be bigger. They'll say, oh, all sports games suck. And you'll be like, what sports games do you play? NFL 2K5 on the Dreamcast. And you're like, okay, well, that's not that's not all sports games. You know, that's not yeah, all sports games. Never, never a good idea, right? Especially if you do it to people or something. Like, I hate, you know, oh, that yeah. type of person. Yeah. Because I had you, some bad experiences. So yeah. it can, you know, it can, that's probably the not a good example. To I think give, the only but, yeah, thing actually, I would say is if you like achievements, you're a bad person and will consistently always be remembered as such. And then yeah, everything else is Yeah, you're an achievement fine. hunter, you are the problem. You are ruining games for me because no, everything not. is becoming a checklisty slog. They've been a checklisty slog since day one. Kick yeah, says, yeah, <laughs> I had that issue with Rise of the Ronin. I enjoy doing everything on the map, but the story in the game hasn't made me care about collecting everything. That's another thing that I think is awesome. I've talked to Kig about this. I tease Kig a lot about it because of Rise of Ronin and all the back and forth of that. He spent his money winning expecting one thing. Didn't get that exact thing, but is still enjoying the game. Mm -hmm. There's something pretty magical about that. And that's something about real Sorry, life. It's can, like a real debt. Want, a real date, would you, would you, almost. What was that? He, he spent his money on something? He expected a certain thing with Rise of the Ronin. Didn't yeah. get it. And what he's it. ended up enjoying yeah. is different, but still enjoyable to him. And so oh, okay. he's yeah, open cool. to the idea of playing the game and going, oh, you know what? Yeah. The story isn't, it's a little dry. It's not what I was hoping here and here. But you know what's weird? Yeah. Despite that, and maybe even a set of parameters that in another game would not be acceptable or not be something I go for, I like it in Rise of Ronin, probably the fiction. 
One, one, yeah. you know, it's Ronin and Samurai and it's ninjas. He likes that. But I think that that's a pretty open way of discussing games because mm-hmm. a lot of people wouldn't be so open. They'd be like, oh, doesn't have what I was expecting, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, no, it mm-hmm. didn't hit in these places, but it's hitting over here in a place I didn't expect. And I like that. And it's just like, dude, that's, yeah. I don't know. I, I think that's cool. It's almost like when you go on a date with, well, pre listed achievements for dates on Tinder. But when you go, when you used to go on a date, you never knew. You might see there where you catfished, whatever. Ignoring that, but let's <laughs> say, let's say you talk to them. They said that they've done this and that. You talk to them, and you get a different idea of what they've said. But you still like the other things about them. That's how wor- the world works, man. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. if it, it's just it's become too almost too clinical at times, which is you know, oh, a game you must be forty hours of this. But if it's 40 hours of this, it can't have more than 10% of this. But if it's got more than 10% of that, it can have five. And pretty soon you're like, dude, what are we discussing right now? It just doesn't. That might be my experience when Stellar Blade comes out where I was expecting something different and hoping for something very different. But I might end up just enjoying what they have there. I think Stellar Blade might be a good example of that. Matter of fact, where a lot of people go into it thinking one thing, not getting that thing. In fact, maybe not even liking it, but then finding another part of it going, oh, you know what? Didn't expect this, but that's actually what I like. Yeah, it's going to be a weird yeah. game. I think a lot yeah, of the yeah. AAA games are like that over time. Because a lot of people I know thought because of Horizon Zero Dawn's big, grand opus kind of thing, they would like the story. And I know a lot of people who don't like the delivery of the story, don't like the characters in the story, but they like shooting them dinosaurs. Oh, yeah, for sure. Gameplay is uh, is uh, amazing. That By the way, on that game, I just beat Zero Dawn. I uh, I didn't think I'd like the story that much, but I actually do like it. It's very predictable, but some characters really make it shine, uh, and and the lore runs really deep. It's pretty cool. I hate Aloy. Well, I don't. You know, she's very very flawed, and they know she's flawed. I don't have a problem with it that much. She is fl- a flawed character, and you know, characters do call it out, especially Silence, who's my favorite character. But anyways, that's my little spiel on on Horizon. What I thought of it. Also, the DLC is dope. It's fun. I'm trying to think. I- her flaws but she's I mean, very she entitled got... she's like a millennial oh she's definitely entitled she was, she, yeah she was very she had an issue uh, there is some character development but she had an issue thinking outside of her own self and who her mom is and stuff like that even mm-hmm. when like the whole fate of the world and the balance lies in her hands and she had this like huge res- responsibility all she could think about then was like but 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 mom so and then silence calls her out for it and she becomes better later on but I'll she die is, on this hill I but thought... i oh go yeah. ahead sorry i didn't know you No, could... i, I, continue. I Sorry, yeah, I just thought I would just, the character was written poorly or she just, they thought it would hit. But no, I think she is, um, she is flawed, deeply flawed. And they knew that, you know what I mean? Like they, they wrote her that way because, because again, silence does call it out and stuff. So uh, maybe I'll like her more in the second game. I don't know. Maybe I'll hate her more. We'll see. In chat, what's the uh, most flawed character you remember liking in a game? I was going to say that, um. I'll die on the hill a little bit that Ashley Williams in Mass Effect is one of the better developed characters through the series because she starts out as a speciesist. She doesn't like other aliens, which, by the way, other aliens don't like humans. That's the thing. A lot of people like to stand up and be like, oh, she's racist or she's speciesist. It's like, yeah, many of them are. One of them tried to kill the other ones or neuter their entire birthing cycle. Like, let's let's really talk about that. But as you continue, if you play her, as you continue, she actually does change depending on some of the stuff. And I, I really did like that. I like flawed characters, though, a lot of times. I didn't think Aloy was interesting enough to be flawed, if that makes sense. I didn't dislike her, but she's sort of... She's like Nate from Uncharted, man. Nate, to me, yeah. has had one good scene in all of Uncharted, and I like Uncharted games now. But four, when he has a scene with his wife, it took him three fucking games to get good. For me, for whatever. The other times, he was just everything I've seen in all other action movies. He was just blasé, boringly written. Like, it didn't really grab me. And then in 4, he finally had something that I was like, I could grab onto. Because he was ultimately flawed in 4. He was married. It wasn't just that he was doing shit on the side. It was the fact that he was married, lied to his wife, went on a trip that risked his life, and the possible future of a family and all this stuff. So it was that's when I gravitated to him. I do like my flawed characters. I think Aloy is... Milk toast to me, a little bit. She is milk toast. She's she might she, the the reason why I dislike her is, is because she has the type of personality I dislike in general, where it's that type of uh, millennial entitlement stuff. Uh, I don't know but, if it's a millennial thing because I saw it 
before millennials were a thing. Yeah, sure. Yeah, there's but a it just thought process me of that, that exists um, from some main characters. I think it's also to get the player to feel more special. Mm-hmm. They're trying to make the player feel special through her. But it's very risky what they did, I think, because they did it. I feel like they did it on purpose. And it's very oh. risky to have like an unlikable protagonist. Yeah. 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 I didn't even. I, I guess I didn't dislike her. I I, I thought. Man, sometimes I did. Sometimes I did. I get. And yeah. So, and their attitude, like, like sometimes it's just like, dude, I just want to punch you because, you know, why are you mean to this guy? Like he did. He's you know. Sometimes See, that's the way like... I felt, weirdly enough, in, like, Red Dead 2, to all those characters, mm-hmm. including John, Red Dead 1. I felt that with mm-hmm. every character. So maybe I should just say that she was not milk toast. She was like I expected, even when her okay. situations were different. Um, I'm trying to really remember much. I liked him more. I like Silence. Uh, silence, Silence, whatever his name is. I, I like Lance Reddick. So yeah, I like Lance Reddick, and I think I gravitated towards him, where the main character was more like, okay, that's me. You know, is like a female, a uh, fucking bow sling and dino killing warrior, which I also loved. So I mm-hmm. guess I don't also get as invested as a lot of people in games. I mean, that's sort of known for me. T Pan, uh, two seventy nine, Canadian money. That's like four dollars American money. Sorry if I missed it. Any thoughts on Broken Roads? Review is coming out. Nice. Uh, review is coming out, but you've seen the reviews already from other people. So. I will say, don't expect much of a difference, unfortunately. Uh, oh, Ashley there's already reviews her... for that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, The Last of Us 2 is a giant pile of crap. This time, time go, Joe. Interesting. I certainly do not think it's a giant pile of crap. There's a lot in that game that's amazing. But there's a lot that sucks. Yeah. The weird one. Weird one. Let's move on from there, because this is just going to turn into, like, people bitching about everything. Or... <laughs> Making excuses. Well, I, I need could some me. Last could of be Us me. two wars in this chat. Nah, <laughs> no, dude. No, oh, I didn't even mean like. Funny enough, I actually did not mean <laughs> Last of Us. I just meant like as a whole with these big games. I think people get yeah. invested because they are so long. If they spent that much time, there's usually a pretty definitive foot down that somebody has. You know, it, I guess I'm. I guess maybe maybe not because I said she was milk toast, and that's not really foot down. I wanted to talk a little bit about Destiny, so. Destiny's got wow. all this weird stuff going on. They've got like a DLC coming uh, or an expansion. Mm-hmm. I don't even know how May, to go think, with Destiny. Right. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Any any idea? Any chances of going back to Destiny? Destiny. I, I was thinking about it. Just because of but the shooting. They have to make. Yeah, because of the shooting, obviously yeah. for sure. Um, but they have to make the onboarding less overwhelming. I don't know how it is now, but going into a game like that with a massive cult community. Uh, that that have that have been with it for a long time, even since Destiny One, know what the hell they're doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, 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 I don't like I don't like joining things like that late unless they have like a really good support system for it. Yeah. Vimmer says ACG is flawed too. That is correct. I am very flawed. Uh, Turned off says what shirts Abzi wearing? Uh, looks like a uh, it's a uh, it's Death Note. I'm sorry to disappoint you. It's not a metal band, but the show is pretty metal. So. Um, I'd like to see a game utilize a flying mount as more than just a way to quickly skip ground content. Yeah, that's true. I think that's why Avatar was so good, man. Avatar had you able to attack, feed it by flying over the rivers, and it would eat food out of the river. Oh, dude, the stuff in Avatar was... There was shit there you know that what, was what not touched because there were so many complaints about, oh, it's just Far Cry, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, dude, you guys it's missed not. out. I'm not saying you missed out and it can't be a bad game to you. I'm saying... There's a lot of stuff I noticed wasn't even talked about, and mm-hmm. I was. It always makes me just a little question in the back of my head about what was experienced. What were you saying? The, the, there's always there's always a uh, fear that if you have something like flying mounts, uh, we've seen it with World of Warcraft. When they add flying mounts, they they lose some of the detail and design yeah. of the world to traverse through. Thankfully, Avatar did both. From what I've played, uh, extremely well. Where on the ground, there's a lot of really cool. Yeah, you know. Yeah, it was a good design. split. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know why, though? also have me flying. I think that's because in Horizon, Aloy is Aloy for the longest period of time. So when you do get other things, it can't be holistic because then you would have to go backwards and be like, okay, now we have to sort of make sure every activity and every blah, blah, blah is available backwards, where Avatar is built quite literally on flying a bunch of pterodactyls. I mean, the entire movie is about that. So 
-hmm. it makes perfect sense that for Avatar, regardless if somebody loves it or not, they built it in. And so a lot of little, the little minutia, even a developer may go, oh, we could do an animation for this, but the game only lets you do this in the last half. So yeah. that seems like that might be a resource better spent on the sound effect that you could do all the time. Where in Avatar, they're like, no, you can ride this fucking thing, you know, within the first hour or so. So it makes more sense. But yeah, I don't know. It's an odd one. You finished Frozen Wilds? I finished Frozen Wilds. Uh, it was a really fun DLC. I got some more info on uh, the on world and, character and the yeah, world and uh, yeah. uh, Hephaestus. Um, Good builder and, uh, DLC for the world. Yes, yes. Uh, and uh, yeah, I finished it before the main story. So I finished it right before, like a couple of quests before finishing the main story. Um, and then just going from that to I launched Forbidden West, the difference between those two is insane. It's it's obviously Horizon still, but everything just feels a lot, lot better. Smoother uh, and better better control. Is that what you mean? Better, be better control, better better impact. Uh, the, the the gameplay feels feels much better. The mouse smoothing. There was some weird mouse smoothing or weird small latency in the first one, so aiming was kind of weird. But in this one, it's airtight. It's really really good. Uh, Dialogue with random characters. Obviously, there's a lot of questions you can ask characters and stuff, but they all seem like some of these characters, just random side characters that you're talking to, the way they react and the way Aloy reacts to them is just so, it, it just, it feels everything's mocapped almost, right? It just feels yeah. like everything, every single thing is mocap. It's way, because in Horizon Zero Dawn, when you talk to a character, they're, yeah, they're, the dialogue isn't that great when the, plus, uh, the, 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 like the mouth movements and stuff like that, plus the, sound that had really really bad bit rate on the on the sound in horizon zero dawn when characters are talking but thankfully that's not the case with forbidden west there's no like that weird you know assassin's creed -y kind of like phone line conversations yeah. that you're yeah. having yeah i don't remember that too much in it i definitely do remember it recently when i played it on streaming so i thought it was the stream doing it but i'll have to go back and check it because i don't know if i mentioned that in the original and i normally would because i can hear that ceiling there's something yeah. that goes on when they, depending on the bit rate they choose, and instead, of, it's almost like I wish somebody would go in and use a fucking EQ and just trim it. Even if it sounds mm -hmm. a little muffled or you could add some effects or whatever, and you wouldn't get that. That frequency. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Legion, yeah. Watch Dogs Legion, because they use AI, which I actually like Watch Dogs Legion as a game and the, and the unique way it does a, uh, audio. But because it's modulated, there's something there that you can pick up on. It's like really high up you know like it's yeah. it's just enough there though that it, it grates on me talk i asked people what they thought for um for flawed characters abby aloy abby i thought craig was lame but they fleshed out that homie in three i love that i thought craig oh wait craig hey is that mass effect i think you're talking about mass effect on that one i think and auger says laura croft at the beginning she is just a pure young girl then she becomes flawed after all the games it's actually a little bit true. Laura doesn't have a lot of character development in the way people think, and it changes a lot because the game changes a lot. But I actually like a lot of, I like a lot of the uh, Tomb Raider games. Not necessarily mm -hmm. their story, but I think uh, Camilla Luddington, who did the voice acting for Rise 14 and Shadow, was awesome. And I, I know they changed her, which sucks because I actually think she did a good job. Um, I wonder what the Horizon multiplayer game story is going to focus on. Dinosaurs, riding yeah. them, killing them, them, collecting them. <laughs> no, I have no Hades, clue, but I feel like... Hades coming around or something, I don't know. Yeah, I just feel like it's... I, I don't know, we'll have to see. Um, Bergen says, Balance from Gladius was a cool character. I really wish Larian Studios would remake Gladius. Are you talking about Gladius for the Xbox original, where you could be the man, uh, you could be the brother or the sister, and you had different monsters that you could hire? Because if so, Gladius is one of my favorite games of all time. I'm just making sure that I remember the game we're talking about. So I'm going to watch this real quick. Dev Guy says Kratos is a good one. Oh, yeah, Kratos. Duh. Kratos is actually a very well-developed character for God of War. Kratos. That's Oh, he's talking to his family. Kratos is a very good example. Yeah. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just asking these guys if That's it was easy. the Gladius game I think I'm talking about. Because it's interesting whenever somebody randomly will mention they like a game that's pr pretty nebulous to me. And I find out. Come on, guys. Gladius. The detective from Disco Elysium... Uh... Very flawed. My uh, the main character. You don't mean his friend, right? No, no. Kim is amazing. Kim is perfect. Nobody's answered my Gladius question. I'm just gonna assume I was right. I'm gonna Google it. 
Um, Chris says, who would win in a war? The Borg or the Dominion's Jamhadar or whatever they're called? Oh, God, uh, yes. the, the Borg, for sure. Also, what are your thoughts on people being upset with Ubisoft pricing for Star Wars? We discussed that at the starting, my friend. We already discussed Star Wars, unfortunately. Long story short, it's not complicated, I don't think. I will say, <laughs> the early yeah. access, as we said, sucks balls. And, um, and um, yeah, that was the main one. Early, oh, it requires an internet connection to install because the, most likely the game is too big. To fit on oh, a single Xbox, that, that always bothers right. me a little bit. But that's, yeah. we're in the future, guys. Blu-ray is not future. That's one <laughs> other thing I would like to see as a new disc format. But that, mm. yes, original Xbox. Thank you very much. So we're talking about Gladius real quick. Gladius is one game. of the, be a little bit, but it's a turn-based XCOM in a mythical world. So you can have like centaurs. And by the way, might be where Claudio gave me my username. I don't remember because he lived with me um, when we did, uh, when I had the original Xbox. But you can be a brother or sister, and it's this huge story about uh, like going through different gladiatorial games, and so you'll go to this one gladiatory Ooh. arena in the forest, and it'll have yeah. you, it'll, you'll be fighting specific mythical creatures in that one, and then other one oh, will be like, like yeah, it's Gladius is way ahead of its time in a lot of uh, console style titles. I was really yeah. surprised anybody even knew what the fuck I was talking about, but um, or that well, they were talking about like the one I like. Yeah. yeah. Kratos is a good example. Barry from Alan Wake 1 starts out as a, a joke, but ends as a homie. That is so true, man. Barry became, Barry is like one of my favorite NPCs after He's all awesome. the Alan Wake games. Yeah, I really wanted him to be in two. Man. Me too. Like Me too, as a big man. character. Like Saga, sorry. Yeah. Sorry, I'm not a huge, she didn't like wow me at all. In mm -hmm. fact, if mm -hmm. Barry was the other character though, Fuck, man. Imagine playing as Barry, oh dude. Oh, my yeah. God. It'd be That's amazing. what people are thinking. That's and what see, people are thinking for the DLC. One of the DLCs to play a different character. You, here's the thing. I really... I'm not joking when I say this. I understand why they were like, oh, Alan Wake. Oh, Saga. I do get mm -hmm. it for current day. I do get the idea of, like, here we got the male protagonist, female protagonist. We'll just do it. But I think that there's a fan service that would have been undeniably answered if the motherfucking game opened up and it was like Alan, Alan, yeah, but that's Barry. one of the th one of oh. the things you were saying with like new people entering the gaming space and all that stuff, and Alan Wake One being a cult classic is that they wanted a character to get yep. everyone that yep. doesn't know anything yep. to get everyone invested and in, and stuff. Yeah, the, the what's interesting to me from Saga's character is her family stuff. Yeah, that, I'll just leave it well, at that. I mean, that's, it's all that's what I, I should say. I love, it's all you know, interesting. The it's Andersons. all interesting. I just think my interest would be higher if it was Barry. I just oh, can't. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, absolutely. absolutely. But I do get that's why I was saying it's starting. I do you get think it. I actually weight? do get it. The Barry or character? Oh, dude. Yeah. yeah. What if Barry shows up and he's like, what if Barry's jacked? Yeah. And he's like, yeah, yeah, Alan, yeah. why you been gone? I've been fucking lifting. I'm yoked. I'm on yeah. TRT, man. My doctor put and his patch gameplay on my butt. is like way more fast paced. Oh, than my you can God. Actually... He can move. <laughs> so where Alan yeah, wakes yeah, all yeah. stoved up, you play as Barry and you're like in yeah. fucking fighting people and shit. <laughs> that would be Damn, even if that, that had been Fuck. a mini game, that would have been yeah. epic. Like just a or yeah. a single level where it just fades in and Barry's like two. <laughs> Four, and you're like yeah. what is going on is this and you just play barry for a small amount of time oh man <laughs> yeah, dude cool. see that kind of stuff they had the cool stuff in alan wake 2 that people you know it's not a spoiler but there's some pretty crazy stuff in alan wake 2 so i feel like they could have spent a couple couple grand and put barry in for a mini well i God like uh what was one of the dlc called the that tv show that plays in alan wake 1 and 2 that you see night springs right night springs, and night yeah. springs is usually Kind of wacky, so maybe we'll get some wacky mini stuff, you know what I mean? Yeah, that kind of stuff is what GTA does, I've noticed. You know, or a Saints Row mm, prior. <laughs> Saints Row yeah, prior yeah. would have done that. Saints Row would have poked fun at things and been like, hey, watch us poke fun but still be good. And Yeah, um, now they're too and, scared to offend anybody, so they yeah. make the most milquetoast game. Yeah. Known to I will say, yeah. I, I did like, um, especially when you, yeah, Saints Row was weird, but when it comes <laughs> to Saga and stuff, I not only like, I liked, I, I just overall like that character, but yeah, I just yeah. like Barry Bear. I, as a fan, it would have been fun. It would have been fun. Does it make that game yeah. bad? No. I liked, I liked Alan Wake. I think Alan Wake had a mm -hmm. couple issues that in years to come, we're going to see this. There's going to mm -hmm. be a video. My brutally mm -hmm. honest 
eight hour expose on why Alan yeah. Wake 2 is actually terrible yeah. after 100%. Yeah. Oh my God, you know, no. like it'll be it'll be the I SEO title from hell. It'll be no, this no. long fucking title. Here's why I don't say that you should get this I'm brutally honest after a thousand percent all the achievements got. Why? Baldur's Gate 3 is terrible. I spent 8,000 hours on this game and I can yeah. dissect why it's actually bad and yeah. you're going to waste your time. But I didn't yeah. waste my time. But I didn't waste yeah, my yeah, time yeah. doing it. Yeah. <laughs> that, you yeah. know that that's... I'm, I am waiting for an Alan Wake one. The only thing I would say with Alan Wake that it's not that it makes it terrible, but I did feel that some of the puzzles were weird and that they didn't fit overall. Nothing big. They were just a little odd. And then um, it took a while to wrap the... It took a while to wrap the story around to make sense of why the first one was better at being weird. I'll just say that. I feel like the first one, probably because of the linear levels and the way it was set up and it was your first time, the first one just felt like it was easier to get a, a cool story grasp from. And the second one bounced around a lot. But the second one also, its bonus is that it bounces around think, a lot. Yeah, like, and it's the second also a one... positive. Yeah, the reason why I love the story so much is because if you know, if you have, that's the thing. I yeah. honestly believe you, you have to play Alan Wake 1 and even Control. Like, you don't have to play oh, Control. Oh, you mean but to like, fully grasp but, Alan Wake 2? Not fully grasp. It's just uh, knowing everything in the Remedy verse and being in tune with, 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 with everything going on. A lot of stuff does hit harder. A lot of stuff, I, a lot I of references. That. and I think that's I mean? actually fair. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, um, yeah. like Jesse shows up for like two seconds. It's like, whoa, dude, that's from the DLC, you know? So Sky Gonzalez says, I like Wander from Shadow of the Colossus. At the beginning, he seems like a hero, but as the game goes on, you realize ancient evil just because he can't, he releases an ancient evil just because he can't let someone go. Yeah, that is true. They they did a good job. That game was overall just really good. It was very fun. Which Which game? Uh, Shadow of the Colossus, where you're hunting oh, down yeah, the yeah, old yeah. PlayStation game. Mm -hmm. um, Sailor says, like those Starfield games, where someone spent 100 hours playing the game, but then they say it sucked. <laughs> but that's not just Starfield. Yeah, it's every game, man. Every, every game. game. It, every game. Like play a game long enough. It's what if you if you live long enough, you'll see yourself become the villain or whatever. Play long yep. long enough, you'll start noticing flaws and shit. That's absolutely for sure. It's almost. Very rarely is the relationship that's married that has the same passion as when you just meet the person, you know? Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. all those Honey sayings are. All those sayings yeah. are is recreations of the exact same thing we see in everything. Whether it be hero, yeah. whether it be villain, whether it be passion, whether it be whatever, it all fades with familiarity. Like, that, yeah. that's just because familiarity is the replacement. And that's why a lot of games do surprise. I, that's why I actually feel that Alan Wake did a great job on some of the stuff that even I didn't like. There's a certain thing that happens in the game that I wasn't as impressed as everybody else. Everybody else was like, the sheer unmitigated audacity, the unbelievable, you know, they have this in the game. And I was like, okay, they do. And it was cool, but I didn't feel like whatever they felt, which was like, you know, th this absolute uh, Damn, I had raw huge... riskiness that this developer. Oh, no, down. I didn't. I just had a huge smile on my face. I loved it. Yeah. I. And yet, even though I didn't, wasn't as impressed, I was still impressed. I was like, I was not as pinky up about it and be like, you know, this, instead, I was like, that was a very smart and it fit within the game. It wasn't as risky as people think either. Uh, to not go into spoilers, we'll just say musically, the game number one and its DLCs are very based around music and audio. There's a lot going on, including the, of course. the, 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 uh, the rock band, what have you. Yeah, so yeah. to see certain things happen in two is not at, is not that surprising. I don't know. I wasn't saying I was expecting it. I was just like, oh, this is a great progression of so that mission in number one where you're running around on the concert stage in the original Island Wake. Do you remember that mm -hmm. one? Yeah, where you're running course. around there playing one so of the highlights of the game. In a weird way, and just I'm not saying it's a direct comparison, but in a weird way. I felt like the parts that happened in two was like a first was a lower down version of the same thing, except no enemies. It just, well, or sort of his mind is his enemy, I guess, but I wasn't that shocked by it. I thought it was an awesome progression for what they did and a cool comedic touch. That was more comedic than the first one. I did mm -hmm. the first one. Mm -hmm. That wasn't really, comedic I just, moment. I, I it was love fun. how it was, was implemented. Like I yeah. just loved going through that and you know, yeah. Remedy knows, Dude, I'm telling you right now, man, whenever you guys talk about um, Death Stranding or Ko mm -hmm. Kojima, I 
would I always think of Alan Wake and what's his name who does um, Sam Lake? Uh, Sam Lake. I always, I always, I'm always, he's always call him Max Payne. But yeah, yeah. I d- honestly do, and I'm not saying pinky up kind of stuff. I'm just saying a guy who knows the medium, and even on the games that don't do great, he, it's obvious he knows the he knows the medium, like he does. And he's more down to earth than than Kojimbo. Yeah, Kojimbo. Yeah. He's um, not. Oh, yeah. Shadow of the Colossus he was, was just P- there with PS2. him, actually. I think What'd he put say? him in the Death Strand. I think, uh, I think yes, just, he was I just saw there that. doing mocap. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. So he's putting him in, yeah. I'm not Death really Stranding stunned any time I see anybody in a Kojima game, because he's, he's, yeah, it's his, so it's, it, and it makes sense to me, because he is such a, uh, a fan of pop oh. culture and stuff like that. Yeah. So the idea of getting the people that you grew up and liked, I find that wholesome more than a story about crying in a room somewhere i actually yeah, find yeah. the action more because the story i can't tell any truth i can't i'm i've i've heard those stories enough where i'm just like yeah mm-hmm. i don't know what's the sob story whatever but the actions of putting those people in games like norman reedus who i mean my first experience with him was blade 2 and being like who's this pudgy you know eye baggy looking weirdo in this and then he shows up in walking dead and i remember being like oh my god the the goof dude like, is in Walking Dead, what the hell? And then he's in Death Stranding as a main character, and it was this amazing nerd progression. It was just like, yeah. he also seems to be one hell of a unique, like, cool guy as well. Yeah, in real yeah, life. yeah. Did you ever watch yeah. the TV show where he drives motorbikes? And they go I know, across... but I saw a bunch of ads for it in Death it Stranding. It is good. It is good, man. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, Death Stranding or is a commercial for it. So is Days Dude, Gone. Dude, it's funny. You'd be, in the, uh, you'd be taking a shit, I think, and then the sound of the... The motorcycle would be going, and then it'll just like come as an ad mm. with Norman Reedus. I think oh, it's really? called Ride or something. Yeah, 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 right, right. Yeah, dude, it's they're they're great. They're just um, it's a guy who probably took so long to become a star that his entire world and patterns are based on not being a star. Yeah, Every emotion yeah, yeah. and action he has is not on the, it's not on what you see. Or it's on the Hollywood. phone pretending you're breaking up like a Kardashian. You know that kind yeah, of shit. Yeah, yeah. It's like this guy yeah, probably yeah. lived. And didn't get jobs enough. I mean, he was busy, but it was obvious that he blew up later. In fact, yeah. the actors I'm starting to like are all the late guys. Pedro Pascal, a little late. Mm. Mm-hmm. At least late in getting that. Boom. Um, the blonde yeah. from Narcos, Steve. He's Steve in Narcos. I can't remember his name, but he he was he's a bad guy. He, yeah, he's the oh. cop in Narcos. He's, oh, he's Pedro's okay. best friend. Or he's Pedro's yeah. partner in Narcos. Yeah, yeah. Um, hey, shut the fuck up, dude. Hey, what? hey, hey. Sorry, Baron. Quiet. Anyway. He didn't even listen. He just barked right away. My dogs don't listen to me at all. Yeah, man. It's um I like seeing those guys in, in Kojima stuff. You can tell Kojima's like, let's you know how some people will say, let's collab. There's nothing in the world worse. There's SoundCloud no droppers. There's yeah. no there's no sentence I've ever ignored quicker than a tweet hey, dude, let's that collab. says let's collab. <laughs> but when somebody yeah, says, yeah, Hey, yeah. do you want to get together and talk about something? That's different. And there's mm-hmm. something about Kojima that despite all my is the collab, bro? He, no, no. That's what I was saying. Is no? despite okay. all my dislike of like, not dislike, but weirdness around him, I actually feel like he's the guy who is saying, "Hey, let's do something." It's not collab. He's, he's excited like, about art. Yeah, and when he does do something, it's not small. See, that's the other yeah. thing. Sometimes you'll get two you two YouTubers or two Twitch streamers. Hey, let's do something. It's a podcast. It's done. And that's actually bothered me before, where I'm like, "Listen, I'm not just going to pop on once. I'm going to engage." Mm-hmm. I'll probably want you to come on. Like, let's do, I'm not going to waste my time with a one-off. Kojima is honestly like that as well. When, like you just said, oh, he likes this person. And then suddenly you see him at the mocap facility and you're like, oh, okay. Interesting. It's not just like, hey man, hey man, I'm going to tweet you. You retweet me. It's sub not for words, sub. It's sub as for well. sub. Yeah. <laughs> sub yeah. for sub. Sub follow for follow. sub, baby. Yeah. You know, you said, you're yeah, just yeah. like, dude, that's fucking gross. It's gross. He's, that's a positive Despite my other issues, that's one of the things I actually really dig about the guy, that he seems genuinely interested in the people that he grew up probably looking at and um, isn't just about meeting them and done. It's not a checklist. He's not achievement hunting the pop culture stars he's met. He's putting them in his shit, which is pretty fucking that's pretty. Do you think they're sweet. doing a mocap for a mocap where he's, he's going to be in Alan Wake 3? I think he said sub for sub, so I was thinking. I think mo-cap that mo-cap. with Sam Lake 
doing what he does, it makes way more sense that they both are in each other's games than it does any other producer that's named. Yes, it yeah. makes more sense yeah. because it would make sense in Alan Wake just because he could have it a commercial on the TV, you know, uh, following the He's adventures of Kojima Sean. Yeah. Or you, and you He's just, you, you could do, yeah. yes, you can do anything, right? Connect the you, universes. Yes. Well, no, I don't, <laughs> yeah. I don't want it to go that far, you know? Yeah. 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 I yeah, mean, yeah. Solid Snake I like shows applesauce, up. but I don't want it mixed in with cottage cheese, you know? Yeah. Solid you Snake don't. shows up, <laughs> but yeah, Norman yeah. Reedus <laughs> is in Al Wake. You're like, all right, man. They're all together. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, let's read some of these. Uh, also, reviews trend negative because people don't post if they like something. Correct. They go into forums and yes. bitch at you for not liking it. <laughs> I'm over Kojima, uh, Kojima, to be honest. He went off the rails after leaving Konami. Dude, even I was me, never under him. That makes no sense to me as a comment. He went off the rails when he left. No, what? dude, Metal Gear was way more convoluted than uh, than anything exactly. now. Exactly, and this is someone who no doesn't idea. love Metal Gear and doesn't yeah. love Death Stranding, but holy crap, does that feel like an alternate Metal universe. Metal Gear was insane, dude. A1 he was Nagel off the rock says, I find that it's often people protesting a patch or update well after the game. I, I find that it's often people that are protesting a patch or update well after a game have and has been out for a while, not so much that they hate playing it for 100 hours. Oh, I have not seen that. Yeah, I get that, though. What is the, I get that. What he was talking about when you see a Steam review where a person says a 1,000 hours disliked or whatever, and he's saying it's mostly sure. because of patches, or he's seen it, which I agree, he probably has seen that. But I have certainly, I would negate that, actually, and not even yeah. bring that up because that would make sense. I'm talking about the ones that don't make sense. Not yeah, those. Yeah, yeah. No, not yeah, those. Yeah, yeah. I I think most people, in fact, are not talking about things that make sense in our chat. They're talking about those situations that don't make sense, and it causes mm -hmm. you to go, how the fuck did we get here? Danwin says, yeah. I'm glad to have grown up in the better era of Kojima. <laughs> there we go. Uh, oh, no, that was turned off who said that, and I agree. Yeah, that that is for sure. Uh, t time to go. Joe says people were hyped for star fail and it supposedly had brand new content around the corner. And that's why they played it for so long. That is like seven degrees of Kevin Bacon for why somebody played a game. That is like 10, 10 excuses for, Oh, or they just played Starfield. <laughs> uh, Dan Owen says Kojima been... did it again, okay. breaking the fourth wall, LOL. And let's see. Uh, I like Omar Onar says this. I think I'm going to read it wrong. He says, I like position remedy as studio takes from a design perspective, but I really hate how for such an artsy A24 type of game is supposed to be unique. It copy pastes so freaking much from Twin Peaks. Does it? So he's saying, copy yeah, paste? it does. It, uh, no, it doesn't copy paste, but it definitely does what you would expect from any movie made since the original 24 plots in writing were ever created. It, do, it does have parts of other movies in it. But so yeah, but if it's something inspired, do. yeah, like Deadly but Premonition is another one, right? Inspired yes. by Twin Peaks. Would you call that copy paste or? Uh, but by the way, I guess there's a thin line. Twin Peaks does uh, Twin Peaks copies many other forms of media prior. Sure. So yeah. there's what, Stephen like, King and stuff. Twilight Zone, Stephen King. There's a shit ton yeah, of yeah. stuff where there's bits taken. What happens is it's usually those bits are taken and then it's flipped. It's flipped. Man, it's hard to describe. Oh, you know how two by four is not square. Two by four. It's not yeah. a four by four. Yeah, yeah. So what happens yeah, with a lot of what I've noticed with a lot of these guys is copied games, they lay the two by four down, they take pieces, and you feel a copy paste. But a yeah. lot of good developers are able to like flip it on the other edge, it, whether it be the genre or a tighter focus, and then take those bits and put them. And because of that, it does feel I mean, if you look if you look straight on a two by four, if it's two or it's the four, if it's on its edge, it does look dramatically different. And sure. so I think that's why somebody looks at Alan Wake and some people don't think it's copying. I think it's copying. And I think that's good that it does because some of its mm -hmm. strengths are expectations mm -hmm. we got from Twin Peaks and the goodness well, I've never of seen Twin, Twin Peaks. Peaks. So now I'm excited to, Dude, to Twin watch Peaks that. is Okay. What's the weirdest Kojima game you've ever played? Uh, doesn't Metal matter. I was going to lie. Twin Peaks is way weirder, is what I was going to say. <laughs> okay, Bro, okay. Twin Peaks okay. is, it's like doing DMT in a womb. I mean, there are times Oof. where you're watching it going, what the f But it's just contained enough that you can almost imagine a friend who's really high 
spending four hours talking about something and right at the end says something that matches to the starting and they walk out the door and you're like, uh, I don't know. Oh my God. Interesting. Did he pay? Yeah. It's I like that kind and, of weird shit. And by the way, I don't even like Twin Peaks. I, I watch yeah. it. I appreciate it. I do not. It's so weird. I don't enjoy it, but I've watched it maybe three times all the way through. It sounds like the type of show that's not going to have a satisfying ending, no matter how you spin it to people. It, 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 it could. It could. Okay. It could for you. It depends on what you want out of if it. You, want... uh, you remember okay. Lost? It's yes. more satis... It's a different genre of show. It's a murder mystery. Sure. So it's like, do all mysteries get solved and are all, sol are all solved puzzles satisfactory to everyone involved with every answer given? Twin mm -hmm. Peaks is like, what if you were high as fuck all the way through that murder investigation? Like, it's... Okay. Dude. <laughs> It's got some crazy ass shit, and it's well worth Peter watching Jean. if you can handle three, four. Because it, I believe, oh, yeah, yeah, if yeah. I remember right, it's, it's still two thousand or two thousand or ninety two, ninety two, right? Ninety one, ninety two. Dude, yeah, I think that's nineties. I think I believe 90s. I graduated and it came out like the next year or two. It's been out for yeah, ages. but there's a new one. Yeah, was and it I good? Watched that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, Same guy, right? It's hard for me to say because I didn't love number one. I don't know how to describe it. It's so worth watching for, if, especially you. You might love it. Because it mm -hmm. is, remember, there were episodes in Lost where you're like, what the fuck's the polar bear got to do with anything? But you were yeah, interested, yeah, yeah. even though your brain was like, I don't think they're going to be able to get out of this. Twin Peaks yeah, yeah. is a little like that. And Twin Peaks feels a lot like a, um, Twin, Peaks, Twin Peaks feels a little bit like, what if a, what if a, what if a detective died and he's in the limbo and he's solving a murder mystery? Oh. That's what Twin Peaks is. That's Ooh. what Twin Peaks. It's, like it's the dark it's, place. Yeah, it's that dis. It's that detached at times, but it's it's primo. You should check it out. You'd like it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, Griffin says I can't understand how anyone can play Metal Gear Solid Two and not think Kojima was going off the walls with that game. Yeah, people forget, man, because it had like a well, it had the so Death Stranding in the beginning in the trailers. When you look at it, it's super weird and off the walls, right? But it had a cohesive story. But Metal Gear is like the opposite, where it's like, oh, it's just, you know, espionage, military, whatever. And then you go in and you're like, what the fuck is all this, dude? It's like a jumble of crazy shit. Yeah. So it's, it's yeah, it's like the opposite. Yeah. Remember when he left, I was of the opinion that he would get more eclectic and without an editor slash director, it might be more of a problem because mm -hmm. of Metal Gear being so bat shit that at times i know a lot of people just sort of liked it because it was bat shit same way twin peaks is they sort of like it because yeah, it's yeah. bat shit and they're like whatever lost isn't as bat shit let's say it's twin peaks so there's a different mm -hmm. kind of fan style but i personally feel that i've been able to track him better and i've wondered at times if he so sometimes you'll hear somebody learned classical music and then at one point they just walked out and the rest they did on their own that mm -hmm. might be where kojima's was stifled under editors and maybe he, he was trying to sneak things in. He was trying to do all this stuff. And so it just sort of blew up into weirdness because I yeah, personally yeah. think death stranding has got some weirdness it is for very weird. sure, but it is. metal gear should have been more solid. And it, that Snake. was not a pun on purpose. It okay. should have been more contained as a military contractor. And instead it was out of control where death stranding yeah. should have been more out of control because it's babies and, fucking all this weird and it was actually i mean it didn't make sense perfectly but there was it sort there was a theme to it that i was like okay i sort of get i sort of get right. what's going on here i right. thought he was gonna and lose I'm his all, mind man legitimately yeah. i'm all I mean, for it, dude I'm, I'm just in the i'm down for any like if you want to yeah, go so fucking I, crazy so and go wild just I didn't give even it to love me Death Stranding, you go, and i you know anything <laughs> he'll release i'll <laughs> at least look at you know i'll yeah. at least look yeah, at yeah. and go okay what i would like more action in my action game than yeah, I hope so, or and I, I hope his new espionage. He had announced yes. an espionage game he's working on. I really am. I want espionage games, so I'm really, really hoping for that one. Uh, let's see. Uh, moving on from there, Kojima feels genuine in his team ups. I would agree. I think you know, despite anything else, that when you look at it, it feels very genuine. I guess is what I would say. Uh, let's see. DMT, the God Molecule. So mystery boxes with nothing burgers inside. Just watched episode one of Shogun. Very good. Yeah, I good, enjoyed the MGS2 weave unraveling before me. It was like a fever dream or Inception. World-renowned... Oh, dude. Oh, sorry. 
let the me finish these. Tonight. Let me finish these. Yeah, sorry, 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 sorry. sorry. Go, 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 oh, go. then let's talk about that because I put that in the title. Um, oh, Twin okay, Peaks okay. intentionally never resolves the main strands. However, it's recently been pieced together uh, what it all means. To poorly sum it up, it's about the transmission of story and how TV hurt us. Yeah, I wouldn't have got that out of that. Cash says, hey, Carrick, also enjoy the podcast while talking or while taking mundane notes for school. Keep up the great work. Well, congratulations on school, man. Do do your education. I know it's cool to drop out and it's cool to not uh, not go to college, but uh, whatever oh school you're goodness. in, I actually think it is smart. So good for you, whatever you're doing. Dude, I'm uh, talk to somebody. <laughs> no, I'm not even going to go into this. Yeah. Oh, no. I was just like, dude, come on, man. Come on. Um, let's see. Does anyone know if they chatted about the Fallout show yet? No, we have not. I think we'll go there. So I saw some previews. They seem to be happy with it. Um. The only part of the trailer I've disliked because I'm going to watch it the moment it comes live. The only trailer part I didn't like was the uh, the powered armor looks fake as hell when it lands. Yeah, it looks very the yeah. jet. Yeah, yeah, it looks way poor. The CGI doesn't look that good on the. And yeah. it looks like it's on a Y. It looks really bad, and it's mm. weird because I just happened to see an episode of Eureka, which is over a decade old, and they have a character get some rocket boots and try to save people in the city. And even that looked better. And I was like, dude, that's like 12 years ago. And the thruster, the way he landed and moved, looked way better than this. That's it, though. Everything else I've yeah. seen, um, maybe the blue. This is going to, I, I want to point this out. It, it it looks less dirty at times than I, I keep wondering yeah, if they have like, like a God four. molecule on their clothing because yeah. her, a lot of parts, she's totally, you know, it's not beat the up. Or suit. Yeah, the vault suit. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, we'll yeah, just yeah. have to see. Small, small quibbles and and cool quibbles. Nothing wrong with what I've seen. Um, mm -hmm. And what's his name's in it from Justified, which is the best ben part. Ben from Lost. Raylan Givens. No, Ben from Lost is a completely different character. And he's also. Oh, in okay. It. Yeah. He's yeah, also. Yeah. In it. yeah you're I'm right. Excited. Yeah, yeah, with yeah. little glasses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dude, he's great, man. He's that guy is a good actor. Person of interest. Dude. Person of interest. Yes. He's and, ace and in that. show. Dude, you know who is in Shogun? The the um, what's his name? Fuck, what's his name? I don't know. Uh, Richard, Richard from Lost is such a good actor, dude. Do you remember Richard? He's uh, he was the helper of Jacob. He was like the guy that Jacob would tell him to tell the others. Wait, to he's do the stuff. guy who he's the sort of hands like middle aged, probably could bang a lot of people in a cul de sac looking guy. With yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, yeah, I know he's who you're phenomenal. About. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, is he? yeah. Oh, is, but yeah. He, where, where in Lost, he looks straight out of like 90210 or whatever. He does. He does. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'll have to He's check amazing. that out. He's amazing. He's in Shogun. That. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I think with uh, the the one positive thing I'm um, old school guy says, felt sorry for the Eureka guy when he started doing Maytag commercials. Old boy, let me uh, school you in. That is actually not only his main income giver, but he was doing it prior to Eureka and when he was in Haven. Um, with Emily Rose, who's the lead from Uncharted, uh, the main mm -hmm. the, uh, uh, Nate's wife, he was also still doing Maytag commercials. He considers it like the best way to make money. He's been doing. It, it, I, I I think it's smart. Remember when actors wouldn't do commercials in 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 America? They go to Japan. Yeah, more are doing it now. Oh dude. yeah, they do yeah, it they now all the time, dude. Uh, yeah. The guys who do like Mass Effect main characters, I'll hear a voice and they're selling like clothing detergent. And every yeah. time they talk on a podcast, they'll be like, oh, you're doing commercials now? And they're like, dude, it's beyond money. It's beyond. Yeah. It's, it's yeah, yeah, absolutely yeah. letting me do everything else. And many times makes them more money than any show, even though that yeah. guy, Colin, is his name. It's, he uh, runs his own comedy right? series and stuff. Yeah. yeah. So much yeah. money in advertisement. <clears throat> but Spock, uh, talking more about um, Fallout, I think the weapons look okay. Yeah. Characters look okay. Ben's in there. Um Deputy Marshal Raylan Givens. What the fuck is his name? Uh, it's Walton Goggins. W Walter Goggins. Yeah, I don't know why I was forgetting his name. He's in there. He's one of my favorite actors of all time. Yeah, I love him. He's in like every Quentin Tarantino movie I ever made, right? <laughs> he always puts him in there. I don't watch a lot of Quentin movies. Oh, okay, okay. Is he in He's, a lot of them? Is he a... shows up in a lot of them. I like that Quentin does the same thing. If he yeah, likes yeah. somebody, yeah, he's yeah, he'll have there, him a lot. There's no fucking same around. With Nolan, he's just right? like, bro. Yeah, Nolan yeah, yeah, yeah. and um, Scorsese. They're just like, dude, Scorsese. we, you know, yeah. a lot of people like, um, what's his name? Uh, looks like the devil, but in a 30 year old body. 
What the fuck oh, was yeah. his name? From Blood Diamond? Uh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no. DiCaprio. Wait, you're talking about DiCaprio. DiCaprio, DiCaprio yeah, yeah, always yeah. looks like a little devil in a 30 year old body or something like that to <laughs> I've me. I've never Every... gotten that. Yeah. yeah um, he but doesn't he, look like a. Yeah. Sorry. He's picked up. I was just going to say he's picked up by a lot of. There's a couple directors that are like, boom, ring him up. Like, like we want him in our movie and they've worked with him once. I find that kind of stuff awesome. You know, I get that yeah. it doesn't leave spaces open for a lot of other people, but um, you like working with somebody, you like working with them. You know, if it helps mm -hmm. you, if you, it helps you be a creator. Let's see. Isn't he in just, isn't he in Hateful Eight? He's in Hateful Eight. He's in uh, the other Western, um, Django? Django Unchained. Django. Yeah, I think that's uh, the one where I saw him in a cut of Django Unchained. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's always a bad guy. Um, I think he was also in, was he in uh, Reservoir Dogs or not? I don't think so. Was he? No, he wasn't. Wait, maybe it is just those two. Maybe it's just the Westerns. Yeah. I mean, he's a dude. Dude, he's just... I think the first thing I ever saw him in was, of all things, Predators. With um, G Giant Schnoz actor. What's his name? In The Pianist. Did you ever see Predators? Uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, the, 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 the black hair guy with the... Yeah, yeah, the dude, yeah. Uh... Oh, Predators movie. Oh, come on, come on. I can't. Why am I not remembering? Why am I not remembering? It is oh, Adrian Brody. Adrian Brody. Yeah, so Adrian Brody, Predators, he was in that. Gets his spine pulled out. And then I saw him in Justified, and I liked him. I just love him, man. He's a fucking good actor. He's awesome. Let's see, what else? That's the most accurate uh, DiCaprio description. Oh, for a little tiny, yeah, he is a little tiny demon in a thirty-year-old body. He does. He looks like that. he's got a he's got Dude, a look the thing to with him. him. That you can't trust with DiCaprio, but I love him. I watch him in everything. But he's he's always yeah. I, but if DiCaprio, he was near me, yeah, DiCaprio and Cillian Murphy to me, those guys are like, <laughs> yeah. like I feel like those guys are just born, like they're just actors. I, yeah. I I can't imagine them being real people. You know what I mean? Yep. Like, what is, does he like have hobbies outside? Like, does he do stuff? Like, does he chill? What the I mean, you don't, you Leonardo's them always traveling the world doing. He also does a shit ton. I, I know it's no. That's what I was gonna say. That's what he gets the shit for. But he also leads like some of the largest donation drives and um, oh, yeah, yeah, stuff yeah, for there, yeah. all. You know, whether it be pe uh, cancer research, clean in the oceans. It's like you know, I get it. It's cool to be jealous of somebody who's fifty banging somebody that's like half his age. If if that's what you want to <laughs> do, it's like I don't care as long as he's donating some of that hot cash to cleaning up the oceans i'm gonna be fine with it griffin says well they got yeah. richard from lost was he, the mayor in dark knight he was in the jump scare scene where the vigilante and the joker he? tortured and killed i don't even know what he's talking about right now richard from lost is was in was the mayor in the dark knight no way cheesy d says no one can top daniel day lewis though greatest actor of all time no debates not only wow. is that incorrect he's a prick he's a giant sagging pos and that's why only now, once he sort of left, have you seen so many other actors being like, dude, I remember recently watching a behind the scenes when they were talking about the, uh, what's the gangs in New York? And they were talking about him um, because his character w hated the Irish. Mm -hmm. He just hated the Irish outside of oh, filming shit. because he's, he's one of those guys who can't act at all unless he like is like, I must be this person. And he treated people like shit. And the director was like, oh, you know, it's just him being him. And I'm like, nah. Sorry. Don't have there was to, someone else like that, you right? to be, There's Sean, a lot of people lot, that, that get into their characters too yeah. much and are just, you know, giant cock pieces. And there's almost nothing in the world I hate worse than somebody like that. There's something about it that's so excuse, like an ex, just the excuse of it is, I don't know. It's like, if that's acting, I don't want actors. Like, I don't need ego. it that bad. It's yeah. not ego. It's that it's that. I mean, if you have to dive so far into it that you're treating the other people like absolute dog shit. Um, you're an expert or whatever. Because, yeah, it's just like, I don't know if that's really what I need around or yeah. what I'm going to laud. Not but other humble. people can like him. Other people, Remy Malik. I just watched a movie with Remy Malik yesterday. And um, what's his name? I got um, a wide Book range. of Eli. Book of Eli. Um And Man on Fire. What's his name? Man. And Denzel? Yeah. Denzel and uh, Remy Malik are in a murder mystery move where they're trying oh, to solve. Wow. Yeah. Really? It's pretty good. Not great. It's pretty good. Let's see. Moving on from there. 
Uh, sounds yes. like Jared Leto. Yeah, the Jared Leto stuff was even blown apart, which was weird. It was like stuff was said, and then the truth came out about what it was, and it was like it was this weird hubbub. I think that's the behind the scenes of being an actor. Always Morbius forever always destroyed one of those the things. lead singer of Thirty Seconds to Mars. To me, by the way, he's... I should point out he's amazing in the same movie with Remy Malek and Denzel Washington. Oh, oh, he's yeah, in it, okay. and he's phenomenal yeah, yeah. in that. But you know, he's a good. I, I love them in uh, maybe Mr. Nobody. Poop to people. Remember Mr. Mr. Nobody? Nobody? It was the. It was about uh, this guy who remembered his life and. Every uh, like in multiple dimensions, so every time he took a choice, both dimensions were created. Oh damn! So, I don't even so know what remembered. that is. I'll watch that. That sounds awesome. Yeah, 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 yeah. People are gonna. Oh, yep. They already started. Yeah, they already started making excuses for method actors. Whatever. There's method acting, then there's jackasses. Deal with it. Time to go. Says you have a milkshake, and I have a milkshake, and we have a straw that reaches all the way into your milkshake. I drink your milkshake. Slurp. Drink it up. Okay, time to go. You've done way too much coke. Moving on from there, let's talk about games coming up this week. We have, <laughs> or coming up this month, we have Stellar Blade. I think yes. Stellar Blade looks like a game people might like. Mm -hmm. yes. Right now, jury's out on Stellar Blade. I think Stellar Blade could be one of those games that hits mediocrity really well. Yeah. Just like absolutely nailing those sixes and sevens but it could also be one that just you know people like what you said where they find something about it that they ended up liking the demos out which i think is the better part and at least the game the way it's, it plays. it's just the discussion on it is really weird it became like a centerpiece discussion about you know gaming and wokeism and all that weird shit mm -hmm. uh, out of nowhere and now everybody is super obsessed with how protagonist women look like like super, super obsessed, way too obsessed. It's like, oh, does this game have a hot girl or an ugly girl? Oh, I don't, you know what I mean? Like, holy shit, dude. Yeah, I don't track it very much. A... I mean, I know people talk yeah. about it and I joke about it being a booty game, but what I played looked fun. Um, yeah. And I played pretty fun. I would, I'm really, I'm highly interested to see how the story portrays that kind of stuff because I actually do like that. For instance, like when I was growing up, I loved Barbarella, which was about like a super hot B movie or B Flash Gordon, female ripoff. But there was yeah. sort of some weird, like, explanations for it. And it, it was more of, back then, it wasn't well done or anything. But I like that kind of stuff. If there's a reason why a character looks a, a certain way, and they start yeah. to describe it. Because if you look at, like, Tomb Raider, sometimes you're, like, really jorts and a tank yeah, top man. when you're out remember, exploring uh, in jagged yeah. areas. Like, that might not yeah. be your best clothing. Yoko Taro from Nier was asked why he made 2B look like that. And he's like, I just like to... I like hot girls or whatever. It's like no explanation. That's just how the Android looks like. Just owned it, I guess. Yeah. I don't know why people talk only about that. Like, I don't even, I care about the game. I don't care. I, I care don't care about, about wokeism. I don't care about liking it because of that or disliking it because of that. I want to yeah. play the game as a whole and see where the story goes. And she goes. needs to not move like a bag of bricks, please. She needs to move a mm. bit, you know. <laughs> yeah, she doesn't. A bit better. <laughs> yeah. She has the frame for someone that can move better than that. It's not even that. It's that it doesn't interact with the game world very often, very well. No. I've noticed yeah. that when I walk around, it comes off as if she, there's a bit of skatiness going on. And I think over the long period, there can be times where that's going to really be a penalty, especially if you're climbing up or going between things where you don't feel like your character's actually on it. Or, you know, those games where you come up to an edge and you put your foot off and one foot's seven feet out there. And yeah. your character's still standing on... There's stuff yeah. about her animation that looks very stilted that I could see, like, those kind of positions popping up a lot. For, for a linear game, right? Yeah, it's, it's... I don't know if it's weird, but it feels like, why are you spending all this time... Why... I get animations need to be cool and stuff like that, but you should prob... I mean, if it doesn't look cool when they're walking around or moving, they're still walking around and moving during combat. So after mm -hmm. a while, people are going to get numbed by the action of the swords, and they're going to start looking at other stuff. And by the way... This is all real shit because people start to attribute that kind of stuff to B-level games. That mm -hmm. is what happens. That is how B-level games sort of get identified as less resources are spent on the polish a little bit. The polish here, the polish there. So I'm just excited to play it. What I played seemed pretty fun, but depends on how long it is. Depends Skills, I did think the skill systems looked like there was going to be a lot of cool stuff. But I got to say, it reminded me of God of War, where you're like, why did Kratia, you know, or any of these games, what Mass Effect, why did they get weaker on the, on the sequel? Or why did this? 
This game does the same thing with skills. It makes, it basically, it upgrades things that a lot of times I'm looking at going, why don't we just have that right now? Like parry timing. Parry timing or any of that. Yeah, you're just like, I don't really understand. If this person's an, a, you know, a fucking special character who's got military training or something like that, why don't you just give them that? And then instead, you know, okay, let me say it this way. By the time you can buy that skill, you're going to be good enough with the parry that you don't need the skill, and that is stupid to me. Yeah, it's, I don't like Do those you see skills what I'm that just make things easier. Make I, I'm the not parry wider after five levels of getting to that point seems vastly reversed. Really weird. You know, yeah. you think, yeah, because you think there are... You would have it that's at happened the in start. Games before. Yeah, or at the end, it'd be like, hey, uh, decrease decrease parry timing, but have but it be better. But increase damage. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember seeing it, and that's what I said in our voice chat. I was like, oh, that's yeah, almost absolutely. reversed. Like, that seems oddly... In a game like this, it seems oddly backwards. Um, hey, Cy. Sorry about that. I don't know what he, he's losing his mind today. But yeah, it did. It felt. It felt like that was was oddly reversed. Overall, I still what I what I played was awesome. I think everybody should check out the demo. You shouldn't pre-order. Um, I'm not saying you should watch reviews either, but I'm saying let it get out, see if there's technical issues, all that kind of stuff. It's, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. It's only fair. It's only fair to do that. Um, yeah. Dragon's Dogma Two is overrated. That's fair to say. Uh, no, isn't it underrated? I thought Dragon's Dogma 2 was a, like 56%, and that would be severely underrated. I um, guess it's overrated right? if you really despise the game, like if you really hate it. If you want to say it's 40%, dude, if that's 40%, I got to rejigger my entire way of thinking about games. I love games. that game. <laughs> I'm, 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 my, in my opinion, I love that game. It's it's very, very special to Dragon's me. Dragon's Dogma? Yes. Oh yeah, yeah. Dragon's Dogma is a blast. He's yeah. got issues, but I, it's definitely a blast. And, and but... you, you know me, I always love system stuff, dynamic shit, sandboxy games. So that one just was hitting it for me. After so many, especially after playing a lot of games, one after the other. How did we even get on Dragon's Dogma? No. I've tried to move on from this like ten times. Why are we back on Dragon's Dogma right. even? All right, I'll stop. Yeah, let's, let's stop. move on. Let's, let's talk about yeah, yeah. like I don't know how we let's get stop. back let's onto stop. that. I shouldn't have read it. I, did, I always do that. I'm always like reading it going, what the fuck? And then I'm like, oh, God damn, we got back onto this. You're right, you're right. But going on to Stellar Blade and on to games, yes. I wanted to talk about other cool ones. Because Harold, Harold Halibut is coming out, which is the nice. Armacrog, or Armacrog. Yeah, that like almost claymation 3D stop motion effect game, which looks yeah. really cool. Um I, they built those levels in real life. I know. And that's I what know. they're using Have as you seen some of the trailers? They just... It's yeah. it's not it's the prettiest ugliest pretty game like you're gonna see in a long time. It's, it's fantastic, man. What they're doing with that game is fun. I I watched a lot. Of, I think they had like a, a dev kind of behind the scenes type of thing, and they were showing how they created the levels and then shot them oh, for the am, scenes. It's amazing. So much man. work and passion put into something like that. Yeah, I cannot wait for that one. I, I don't know if it's gonna appeal to people because they also decided that instead of the puzzle work you normally see, it's about yeah. Harold being exactly as blasé and sort of as his name it's him yeah. going about his day-to-day -day life and then things happen versus like get you know a straw and a light and build a dishwasher you know moon logic kind of puzzles yeah. so yeah, that'll yeah. be fun to see and then um broken roads um there was let me look there was one other one i just brought up this 2000 or 2024 release list games there was um it's a smaller game that looks like 2D furries fighting. Now, bear with me. It, it's not. I'm just calling them furries because they're animals. It's not gigantic. No, gigantic had some tech issues. I saw yesterday, right? Gigantic oh, released and had some server issues, unfortunately. Yeah. Oh shit. Um, okay. No, this is a 2D. Uh, like, did you ever play the game that preceded Unicorn Overlord? Um, yes. By that uh, Grim. Wait, Unicorn Overlord, that's the, the, yeah, the, game the Nintendo that one. That? Yeah, the game that preceded that by those same devs. It was um it's got this 2D that look. That was 13 and... Sentinels. No, that okay. they did. Then I'm thinking of then thinking maybe even preceding that. I'll just use uh, a different one to explain it because um Okay. This one is such a weird game. Let me let me look up in my history. It it looks phenomenal. It's like a 2D fighting game with you you can be three different heroes they're all an animal of some kind mm -hmm. and you're doing like turn-based fighting side to side um grim dawn does that make sense does that sound by atlas grim, grim dawn. Gr dawn 
Dude, it's been a long time since I've played that game, man. Grim Dawn is a ARPG. Not that. Not that. Damn it. But anyway, there's the other one. I'm still looking. Dragon's Crown, it's not that. See, I was in there with the chat, and we talked about this game for a while. And um, a lot of people in there were like, oh, that does look cool. But obviously, I looked at like 80 games in chat that day. Apparently, my brain ain't remembering all 80. So something by Vanillaware that they've done No, before? no, no. I was just saying it reminded me a little bit of it. But don't worry about that because yeah. it's not the greatest uh, explanation. Let me look Dragon's here. Dragon's Crown. Sandland. 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 Yep, Sandland, Sandland looks... is an anime. What are, what is the game though? Is Sandland like a is no. a very it's an open world car building, base building, Namco Bandai goofy ass story game. Because it's also okay. based on the manga or whatever. The base it's yeah. based on the Sandland story and stuff. Because your character's Beelzebub, yeah. you were like, it's it's out there. But the base building the uh, the little car building that looks uh, like right up my alley. That's something that mm. I would be able to do. Would would end up enjoying. Damn, I can't find that game. That's too bad. Hey, Uden Chronicles is coming out August. Yeah, like I let him down. Talking about that. Yeah, I, so so that game, it's not for me. But I didn't put it on the April list because it never came up on any of my PR. It never came up on any games I'd looked at. Never came up anywhere. But apparently, mm -hmm. I really let a lot of people down. Because a lot of people feel like that is the only game that deserved to be on the April list. The Eugen Chronicles? Yeah. There's a lot of people so, really... That one's coming really out Game Pass Day 1, which is pretty cool. Um, I've only known... I don't know Eugen Chronicles other than Rising, which I thought was okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I got to look at that more. It looks like a lot of people are excited for it. And, um, you know, it's on Game Pass, so it doesn't hurt to, to try it out. Does it have the fat little fatty characters is it that kind of jrpg oh, or is chibi? it more no 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 i don't think it's chibi oh is it i think it is wait let's see 100 heroes it's called yeah it's kind of like uh 100 heroes cool art style yeah little 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 you know kitty jrpg shit yeah you're playing like a dude with dev guy reminded me that the original one i was bringing up was odin sphere thanks um and odin this game sphere. that i'm talking about doesn't necessarily look like it. it's just that something about the side to side the side on combat reminded me of it but what is it i called? admit i looked at it, but dude if i knew that i'd be fucking saying it right now like that's the problem i can't remember <laughs> i can't oh, remember shit. i so even looked at my history August on game. steam yeah it's it, it, and i got fairy. some pr oh, on it do not google I, that sorry that's do not google what oh fairy games oh. griffin what are your top five favorite 90s first person shooters oh wait it's april not april oh August. dude i have no clue based on just the 90s i don't even remember what games are released in the 90s that's fucking two and a half decades ago man like 90s, I don't, FPS. 90s i'm trying to think of what um 90s what even was released <laughs> uh quake <laughs> and doom and half-life Unreal Tournament, that's yours. Your favorite is Unreal Tournament. Oh, yeah, 1999, yeah. Unreal Tournament yeah, is by yeah. far my fave. Yeah, Wolfenstein 3D, Duke Nukem 3D. My, my favorite would be Duke Nukem 64, I guess. Duke Nukem 64 wasn't necessarily ahead of its time, but I think that it was doing a lot with what the, you know, the N64 was trying to do. It was pretty cool. Yeah. It was pretty cool to yeah. see. I, it just didn't, for whatever reason, really grab me. Um, mm. I'm looking right now to try to see if I can find this because... It's going to bother me, but it's not coming up on anything. Dude, I hate that too, because especially when I dive into a shit ton of games for that list, there's so many games I have to ignore. And then we come back to it later and I'm like, oh yeah, there's 15 games on here I want to check out. And then I can never remember the name because there's so many games coming out, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Killer Clowns from Outer Space is, co is coming out in June. Chow Damn, which, that's great. Which what? Which one? That's a mouthful. That's an old 80s, um, maybe, well, maybe not 80s, maybe, m maybe not be that old, but it's Killer Clowns from Outer Space is a horror movie from the 80s about Killer Clowns from Outer Space, and it's becoming a video game, which a lot of people are excited for, just because it's a it's a different thing. Um, May has Homeworld 3, supposedly. Do you think that's actually coming out? Oh, Manor Lords is coming out this April. Manor Lords. Oh my god, dude. You're excited. I there you go. There you go. I'm super excited for it, but it's coming out early access, so I don't know like if I it's going to be, you know. 
if it's gonna be you know if it's gonna be have enough content uh, or, i don't know scratch what no yeah, it's no, no. Out early access no 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 mm. yeah mm. yeah yeah i'm on steam right now there's not there's no indication of early access but the trailer said uh, coming out to early. Remember when I was like super depressed? I do not remember, because... but I will. I I will tell you. It, I'm look. I'm right here looking at Man Lords, planned release date April 26th. Yeah. And then it continues to just go on. Nothing about early access at all. No early access. How long will it be in early access? Nothing. So that is a big, big, big problem. If that game is coming to early access and has pre-orders available and does not state it's early access on Steam. Unless I'm going nuts, I'm staring right at it. In the trailer, look, look, wait, wait. Manor Lords trailer. It says coming out to early access. Um, uh, Nagel says full release. So maybe they changed it, man. Do you think maybe they delayed it since you watched that, that trailer? I would, that, would be, that would be amazing because it's, it's that full was release. like a deep cut into my heart and soul uh steam page updated wait seriously G do games do that there's no way you mean well what i was saying is is it possible you were watching the trailer and back then it was going to be early access maybe it's been delayed once the trailer and remember when they when they showed it in xbox i don't i come on okay so 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 what happened was they showed it in the xbox and i remember this very clearly okay unless this is some like mandela effect shit bernstein bears and it was whatever. banner lords it was Manor Lords. Or Medieval Man Dynasty, because Medieval Dynasty no, no, no. is early access. No, no, no. It, it was, was Manor Xbox. Lords. All right. It was Manor Lords. And and uh, and they said release April 26th. And I was super excited, blah, blah, blah. And then I went to show my friend the trailer, and I watched it all with him. And then I noticed it says launching well, early hey, access. It's full. And I was very disappointed. But Don't it's be full disappointed. Now, so, so they well, changed. Oh, my fucking God. Fuck yes, dude. Oh, my God, yes. All right. Well, I'm very excited for that. So. Here we Hell go. Yeah. Everybody just got the full spectrum of emotions. Yeah. The full Hell spectrum yes. of unhappy, happy, glad, sad. Oh. Sort of sexually anxious for some weird reason I can never understand <laughs> never understand. And then and then now fully happy. Those were that was the span. That was the absolute you just got all yeah. of So PC gamer, yeah, back in twenty uh, October twenty five, they were like yeah, it's releasing in early access, but on October twenty five, we're not in October twenty four yet. No, no, no. Back in back in October, there's oh, an article I, that was like, yeah, it's going to release in early access, but I guess they changed that now. I feel like is... everybody in chat just got a trip oh, behind the, behind the curtain. The yeah, Wizard I was, of Oz. I was dude, because like, yeah, it's just all this excited. back and forth where they're like, they didn't know where it was going, slightly scared. A little bit anxious, somewhat frustrated, a yes. little, little horny. All right. Let's move on from there. We got, um, let's see, Top Spin okay. 2K25, which looks like Top Spin 2K05, but whatever. If you're like game dev and you like your tennis games, uh, Top Spin's your game because I'm pretty sure there ain't shit out there that's a, that's a tennis game other than that one. Maybe one other. So if you like tennis games, uh, you can play it. I got to tell you. Man, does it look rough as shit. But, you know... I miss tennis games. Yeah, yeah. virtual tennis sort of nailed it, and you had a couple after that, and um, they never really tried to get better after that. They just... Yeah, yeah. It's just the same. It's just tennis, right? Yeah. Um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Arcade Wrath of the Mutants. I believe I looked at that one. Sort of didn't. It sort of didn't grab me. It looks to, to be sort of directly something from the arcades in that style. It's not mm -hmm. really my thing. Mm -hmm. Were you a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles fan when you grew up? Yeah, a little bit. You know, I just watched it like any other cartoon. wasn't totally invested in it. I played yeah, the... Yeah. I, my, my favorite thing from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was the SNES game. The, the little beat-em-up, which was really, really fun. I loved that. Oh, and then, yeah. And then there was a couple PS2... Uh, original xbox games that were like co-op gauntlet you know when there was like a huge surge of gauntlet games that was one of them was T tmnt the elf is about really to die yeah, yeah you just play a different characters gauntlet is anybody else you got any games for april you're looking forward to gauntlet was um i always weirdly enough i always smell fish when i talk of gauntlet because i would work at the fish plant at my yeah. dad's fish plant and then i would get done and i would always have 
a Diet Mountain Dew and an Eskimo pie, the ice cream pies, the ice cream, they yeah. have the chocolate, and, and then play gauntlet until he got off work. So for two hours, I would he would give me my pay and coins, and I would just go down and just play gauntlet at the 7-Eleven for hours. The elf is about to die. The elf is about to die. I love that shit, man. Yeah. So good yeah, back yeah. in the day. Those quarter, and they look. you look at them now, and your brain can't comprehend we played those games and thought they were fun. You look at them, mm -hmm. and it's like seven polygons no, I'm sorry. I don't know why I said that. Pixel sprites, but changing, you know, their location and like a silver one that went up and down to be the sword. And you were just like, yeah. dude, this is amazing. Remember the yeah. ghosts? They were just like a W almost with their hands. Like it was just white like and ASCII. blue. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. They were horrendous looking. And back then just being like, this is the shit, man. This is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I love the, 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 the oh, huge surge of just like the games that copied it, I guess, with all the different IPs and any IP that has different characters, like a Marvel game or whatever, it was basically a gauntlet game. There's just so much to uh, couch co op with. Yeah. Deconfused says tennis has been bleak. Yeah, it's weird. Tennis is so unrefined compared to all the others because I have Dreamcast yeah. and all this stuff and I play UFC and NFL and they have their graphics have dramatically increased. And almost to the point to where now you're just sort of, all right, this is football to the, uh, in a way, especially the last couple of years, there's not much more that they can do with that many people on screen and all the stuff that they're doing. And yet I see tennis, man. And I'm, I'm like, I don't know if these guys didn't get new updated systems since the PS2 or what, but fuck, it's bad. It just no yeah. real good change there. Um, Sailor says stellar blade, stellar blade, um, Gauntlet Dark Legacy on the PS2 was my only Gauntlet game. That was a long time ago. Uh, Grumpus says, spend $100 on Tekken 2 at the arcade during Christmas break one year. Oh, yeah. Tekken, I used to play at the arcade a lot. Tekken? Really? I never yeah, yeah. once played Tekken or the cop game that wasn't Virtual Cop from Namco. Time Cop. No. No. Time that's cop? Is that right? Oh, no, that's time a movie. Splitters? Time Splitters? Hmm. Is it the cover shoot? The, the one? The it was, yeah. Shoot em up? The yeah. Oh, you, yeah, yeah, was that, something. Yeah, I played that a lot. I feel like it was Time Cop, but anyway, yeah, I remember going to the uh, arcade, and those were always, you know, they were pretty popular, but I was always a Virtual Fighter Sega fan, so I would do, like, Virtual mm -hmm. Cop and Virtual Fighter, where other people were, not other everybody, but a lot of people like Tekken. Street Fighter even wasn't my game. Time Man. Crisis. Time Crisis, thanks. Yeah, Time Crisis. Yeah, yeah, Oops. I love that. And there was a, they they released a couple of them on the Wii or something. Or they released one on the Wii with the with the Namco used to release a lot of their stuff. Sega for a while was releasing some of those, like a virtual cop. I don't even know if arcades. I mean, I'm sure they exist. I don't know why I say that, but I don't even know yeah, the yeah. arcade where arcades are now. Like, are yeah, there are even there games that are there games that are pushing tech other than you know like movement or something in an arcade anymore? It's because remember arcade game. I still remember going to the arcade and the game on the console would never be as good. It was close. They'd yeah. be like close yeah, yeah. to arcade. Perfect. And then whatever time this particularly happened, you realized, oh, it won't be better when I go to the arcade. Now the at home version looks better and the arcade becomes yeah. the claw games and Plinko or whatever, you know, it, it became more of a physical thing. You went with friends to do some particular thing. And yeah. I like the ones where Weird. you were in big things that moved around and yeah. sometimes even went upside down while you like controlled something. You know, those were really, really cool. Yeah. The physical, but there were a lot of the physicality of it. experiences with that. Um, but I guess now there's VR, right? So there's, you can go to the arcade and get in a VR and they'd have like the whole arena. Just uh, go, in, mapped out. In, go into an arcade and like playing a game that moves you around just makes me think it's going to smell like vomit and BO. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, you go in and there's yeah. that tang of a school bus where some kids got sick on the ride to school. You get into the ride to home and you're like, smells like that chemical they put down. Somebody got yeah. sick. Yeah. There was yeah, this I don't arcade think I'd game go to an arcade. that also released on PC, but obviously it was better in the arcade because you were in one of those things where you had, you were just on a cannon and you were just defending. Uh, depending on <laughs> where you were. It you mean like you were sandy. sitting on an arcade? You were, you were sitting, sitting on a thing. cannon? Oh, gotcha. I'm and, seeing and that. And then it would move, you know, they, they released it on PC as well. It was a really old game, but you just like shoot down stuff. It was really fun. I think the only arc, let's see. I don't remember that one at all. Uh, the only physical moving ones I remember were, there were, there was hmm. a, oh, motor, uh, 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 the race, uh, the, um, 
Hang on. The Sega with the motorbike, the plastic motorbike. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I love it that when you really look at Hang On, it had like eight degrees of finite leaning. That was it. Four to the left, mm-hmm. four to the right. But man, you yeah. felt you were like, I am Tom Cruise in Mission Impossible. Yeah. Like there yeah, I am, yeah. there is no one. I look like him right now. I look really cool. Even on this plastic yeah. bike. You look like a jackass, but boy, it felt good, man. And that was fun. They'd have the screen right in front of your face, and it would connect it connected to the motorbike. Motorbike could move. Like, Why am I man? That was so good, man. I was yeah. always surprised that those things didn't break because I remember distinctly that the Hang On in particular motorbikes felt like they were just hollow plastic. So I'm assuming yeah. what they did was they built a shell around a steel post for the seat. Because otherwise, that snap. thing would shatter under somebody. Yeah. You know, you get like a 250-pound yeah. dude, man, come on, you know, and it just bust <laughs> off. So I'm assuming they built the skeleton, maybe, because you still had to be able to move it quickly, remember? Because you were yeah. moving by leaning, and you could put yeah. your feet up and fully lean. Yeah. Oh, so good. Yeah, yeah. Those were so good. Yeah, those man. were fun. Yeah. Um, somebody said beachhead. Somebody was asking if it was beachhead. Yes, beachhead. Yeah, beachhead. Oh, my God. You found it. Yeah, it's called Beachhead. Oh, my you God. You stupid Beachhead? That sounds like something Nico would say in GTA 4. You were a Beachhead. Yeah, it was Beachhead, dude. One. Oh, my God. Beachhead 2000. I don't even Good know what that times, is. I've never man. even heard of that. Beachhead? Yeah. Thunder, Thunderblade from Sega. Yeah, somebody just mentioned that. That was that was the shit right there. Um, Looking at new news, we'll cover some of this. Uh, Talking about, fi- yeah, we don't care about Fallout. We've talked about it a little bit. Excited for the show. Um, Game Informer has a hands-on impressions of Star Wars Outlaws. That's very cool. So they got to go and play that one. That'll be. I'll, I'll definitely check that out. I, I think overall, I know. I'm not saying their review. Whatever. I'm not talking about reviews, but I'm saying their impressions. What they talk about. I've noticed they have a tendency to many times still talk about negatives in their impressions, which I actually like. They're not saying it sucks. They'll be like, but there's this and this, and I like that because it feels like somebody wasn't just sort of shiny, you know, sure. at yeah, this yeah, event. Yeah. Um, yeah. let's see a decade in Tamara. Oh yeah. I did want to talk about dude. So did you see that? Um, ESO has made $2 billion. ESO, That's fucking nuts, bro. Yeah, it is it's nuts. Insane. Then I was also looking at how long they'd been around. It's just been forever. And the mm-hmm. fact that whenever I talk to people in chat, I don't know if you were here on Friday. Or if we talked about this on Wednesday, I could be wrong on which one. I think we skipped last Wednesday. Um, whenever I talk to somebody about ESO, I do not... I'm sure somebody in chat is going to say this just to stymie me. But I always hear people say one of two things about ESO if they've tried it. It either didn't work for them at all or they love it. I mm-hmm. don't remember ever really talking to somebody about ESO who's who says, oh, it's, you know... It's okay. It wasn't for me or what... Yeah, it feels like their combat and stuff and everything is like solid and i can't mm-hmm. say that for a lot of mmos because i can tell you i played a lot of mmos where i walk away going eh but eso definitely not that way eso is one of the few games that like we were in chat and i was asking people and every person who had played it well i think they all liked it there might have been one or two but there was nobody who was meh about that and i don't maybe that's a negative maybe that's because it um well no i don't see how that could be a negative that just seems to be positive People who like it love it, and the people who don't just don't. There's no mediocrity in that game. I feel like it was a really good MMO. I really yeah. like ESO. I think I think I loved uh, that it. There's a lot of similar MMOs coming out, uh, and it came out yeah. when 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 everyone was trying to do WoW. Yeah, and right. uh, so the idea is it has almost old school where you can just it's well old school and like Elder Scrolls where you have your two handed, you have your your yeah. armor and you have your you know you have your actual class and you can put points where you want and kind of do your own thing um and it had and it didn't have these mmoe fetch questy kind of kind of quests that had actual yeah. big quests that had you go into dungeons and doing stuff so yeah to so me weird. it was i loved oh, it as an rpg more so mm. i didn't really do any raids or anything so i couldn't i couldn't comment on the mmo aspects of it but to me, I, it was like a really good RPG. I did join up with my friend's MMO of it. Whatever that's Yeah, called. I did a dungeon with friends. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, I just, I love it. I like the fighting. I like the story. I like the characters. I like the voiceovers. I actually thought were good. There was, they got a couple people to do voiceovers that I recognize. And it's got a ton of content from games we don't have from them 
reflected like Morrowind, you know, like the locations from those games, which I think Everything is really smart. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's honest to God. I mean, I would not tell somebody not to play Morrowind ever because it's a, it's his own thing. But it's pretty cool that if you did like that, you can go in and jump into ESO and yeah. still get it's kind the of what location. The Republic is to Kotor, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. In a way, yeah, that is true. Yeah, it was just weird when we were all talking about it that I didn't really hear anybody just meh. It was like I really like this game, or they bounced off of it completely, and it was for a lot of people. It was because it did feel like a nor, you know, like an M. It, it was. It didn't necessarily go out there and adjust combat a ton or well, it, anything. It, like that. it had issues at launch. I remember where they had a subscription model. People, yeah, went and then they went to Tamarillo United, unlimited, I think, t- unlimited. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, and then it became good. Yeah, yeah. It's just been quite interesting to see that because a lot of the games I talk to people about, there's this meandering that goes on, especially with MMOs. I don't know mm-hmm. what it is with MMOs. Maybe it's the amount of time and the way their gameplay loop is that I hear mm-hmm. a lot of people go like, "It's eh." It's like they didn't hate it enough. They stuck with it enough to think it's okay, a yeah. little like the opposite of a Steam review, right? Yeah. They they unless actually did Fantasy play a bunch and, and they people, think it's pretty good. Yeah, unless it's Final Fantasy XIV. Swear by that shit, like crazy. or hate oh it beyond God. all belief. I will I will say, all, yeah, I, yeah. I I haven't seen a lot of hatred for ESO almost ever, but I have mm-hmm. seen hatred for Final Fantasy, and I don't know oh, how much yeah, of that's definitely. related to the the characters, the look, or you know, I don't know much about Final Fantasy other than I really did not like that game. I did I, the, mostly the first the 30 fiction. hours mostly the are hard to get in to get through yeah. the first 30 hours and it's it's hard to sell out on someone where it's like the first 30 hours you're gonna be bored out of your mind you're gonna feel like your mind brain is melting and seeping out of your ears you're gonna want to just you know uninstall immediately but you have to get through those 30 hours in the beginning to make it that's good that's, all, that's always a, a hard sell, sell man that's a always hard, a hard sell. sell it's yeah, like yeah yeah i mean that's a that is a hard that is a that is well beyond the normal number of even a joke that I make about ten hours. it takes four yeah, hours to yeah. get good or takes or ten hours. hours. If you're fucking yeah, yeah, yeah. saying it takes 30 hours to get good, I'm hours. like, or is the Sometimes 100 more. hours you play only 70 hours worth? Like, there's a weird reverse math going on when it takes 30 hours to get good. Um, if you are, if you like Final Fantasy, though, mm-hmm. maybe you go into it with a different thought process and maybe those 30 hours you're just more okay with i guess i don't know and it's not like know. modern mmos where where you get to end game quickly and they sunset stuff and push you through there it's like nope you you do everything so um i did a lot more uh to get to like the, to, to get to end game or max level or whatever it took me a thousand hours you know so the journey can be long um and and i don't know i don't know what they do about that because the story is like the main central focus of it that's what differentiates it from a lot of others yeah arr is fucking bad bad writing bad acting just 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 all around bad yeah but it had some cool stuff that got i would through say it. also in that in that spot of games that take a, a long time mmos that take a long time i felt that with a yeah. lot of the um uh, like the amazon style what's the new world or whatever it's called new um, world yeah I've found yeah. with those kind of games, they always take me a long time. To, not to get good, but to, like, get enough Acclimate. to do anything. No, to, yeah. to where I feel like I'm doing anything. A lot of those games are just like, right. ho-hum. And I know that's the gameplay loop, but since yeah. I know that's a gameplay loop, that means my pattern was created by playing it many times on other yeah. versions. So to jump in again and saying, I know that's the gameplay loop, to me, seems a little bit crazy. It's a little like Voss yeah. and Far, Far, you know, Far Cry. You know, if you do the same thing many times, it's like at some point right. I got to step away and say, I'm just not going to re rehash the same old, old tread. Has there been an MMO that you've ever played where you, it fucking, it just blows it out of the water. Like it doesn't change. It doesn't blow it out of the water and good, but it changes it up enough that right away you were like, damn, when it comes to an MMO, if it does yeah, something yeah, yeah. different. So, like, I think it was old Republic where I was like, holy shit, you know, because I wasn't used to, uh, getting story or any player agency yeah. in games and mmos especially uh, coming out of wow and stuff you're just a person in the world and i i never thought you could deliver a good story in an mmo uh much less yeah have decisions that impact it so i think that one blew it out of the water because right from the start they show you that yeah you can be jedi or sith and you can be jedi good guy or jedi bad guy or sith mm-hmm. good guy sith bad guy and i was like damn yeah i've never seen that before um so good to be that, fucking Eve online wrong on, on that yeah. oh eve online yeah. is weird dude eve wait online. what yeah. eve online you meant at the starting 
You mean no, it was so no, different? No. No, no, no. It was just the stories I hear about oh, okay. it where it's like, okay, okay. this is an MMO okay. I would imagine. Because I was like, what's happening in yeah. this world where Eve, Eve Online... Online <laughs> when you see the news of it, Eve yeah. Online sounds like an MMO that's part of a fiction, that's part of a book or a movie. How in a movie, an MMO is like, oh my God, I just like messaged this guy and I did things. You know, you know, movies blow up MMOs and you can do MMOs sometimes or, or in a TV show when an MMO, MMO pops up. It's the opposite of an Instagram filter to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. An opposite. It's where yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The, the more you look at it, the prettier it gets or the more it gets. It's, it would be like yeah, somehow yeah. peering through and going, somebody added an Instagram filter to make this person ugly. And then you yeah. go and you're like, wait, they're beautiful. What the, that's that game. You look at it, you're yeah. like, dude, it looks 1904. That shit's like straight up, you know, old style Hewlett Packard computer shit. It doesn't look yeah, very yeah. good at the front. It looks like a, it almost looks like a mobile game where it's got your tiles and you're just clicking on things. You're like, what the hell? But then you hear people tell stories. You see that occasional YouTube at 12 FPS because admittedly it still doesn't run well. Yeah. But you see that shit and you're like, dude, that's fucking awesome. Like mm -hmm. it, it, it's it's so weird. I love to hear stories about it. That's as invested as I'm ever going to get in Eve. Yeah, Denovan plays it or has that type played of game, it, and I'll hear yeah, people you tell have to stories. Play it, nothing else. Yes, yeah. like your life. It, now. And even if you did play it, nothing else. You're still experiencing the same stuff we just talked about. It's really mm -hmm. an old looking, old playing game, but it it's there's a level of fiction in that that makes like Alan Wake look like a baby's. You know, a child yeah. story like the the shit yeah. you hear about in the forum. You're like, what the? F well, that's, really? that's that's you know, that's what I want to see more MMOs do, where they just make a foundation and uh, amazing tools, and then the community makes the lore. I want to see more of that, where where the story is the people. And that's what yeah. I always like imagined as a kid what an MMO would be. Yeah. Super Tramp, five dollars. Someone mentioned Star Citizen. Let's talk about that fan base. I don't know anything about the fan base, but man, I've been playing a bunch of Star Citizen. A bunch of us got into it. God damn. For fifty oh, bucks, shit. I've got my I've got my fun out of that game. It's crazy <laughs> that they've Doesn't locked it down finally. Yeah. No, it does have to I mean, you know, I didn't kickstart it. Or no, I I don't think I did. I think I did the thing where later just you just buy a ship. ship. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. um it locking it down, that's one thing, especially if you know Chris Rob. This is almost like if you know um Kojima. Mm -hmm. So Chris Roberts, if he followed Chris Roberts, you already knew this is where he was going from his very first stuff. Like, but when you look at it from the outside and how long they've been, it's just it's it's also not to be rude to anybody, but it's also it's a good indication of of a Chris Roberts game bloated, mm -hmm. taking too long when it comes not to the game, but the creation of it. This is not unheard of for him. Freelancer before it's just bigger and and. It's got into Kickstarter, which was its main thing. So that all, all that kind of stuff is like real. But at the same time, I was watching Tomo play it and I've been playing it and I'm sitting there going, oh, damn, like they've they actually know where they're going now. It'll be so interesting to see them because they've locked down the single. They've locked down all their sort of the mechanics. They're like, we're not building or adding anything. And this is where we're going, which is real, by the way, there is. It's because I tease it all the time. It's like it's been around forever. It's sort of it's sort of like the long the long in the tooth kind of game. And will it ever come out? But they've locked down the um, the actual mechanics of everything. They're not adding new stuff. They are actually going to release it. I don't know what form it'll be in, but I can tell you three things stunned me with this recently. One runs 50,000 billion, gillion, jillion times better than it ever did. It's mind blowing. Wow, the optimization that thing has compared to when I played it, even on the same hardware as I've jumped forward. That is awesome. It's a good indicator of, I don't know where it'll be when it releases. Cause they say 2025 and I'm still hedging. I'm still thinking more like with GTA, same way, like 2026 26. seems. Yeah. Um, the second thing is it has the one thing I've wished other space games have which is a depth to little things. Like if you get arrested, you can go and hack the system to stop, you know, the bounty. You can do little, we've seen it in some games, but they've got a couple things in there. A lot of stuff is manual in game. Yes, and not like there's, a there's a tangible analog to it that I like. Yeah, um, I love that. Yeah. And then the other thing that I've, I really, especially because I take a, a backseat, I actually experience it because you can talk about it, but it, until you play it, you're just sort of bitching about something. But one thing I have done when I was starting to, like jump down and, and start to play it is I don't know how the Starfields, the um the X games, 
Parkan, that's not coming out anymore, but because Parkan 2 was a space game as well. Uh, the other, there's a game that came out recently. It was early access, made by a single guy. It looked really good. It had a lot of different things, but it was really janky, right? It was a little, sort of different pieces were stapled together. Um, I don't know how games handle No Man's Sky's expectations. No Man's Sky's expectations have changed the that entire landscape. I don't think I've seen a genre other than maybe GTA switching from just cars to everything. And Forza Horizon, another game I was pr super happy to be wrong on. But Forza Horizon changed a lot for me and what I wanted from a game. Like, I was just like, oh, damn, you don't need tracks. Like, this does work. Mm -hmm. And No Man's Sky did it. I don't know how or where Star Citizen fits there. Because No Man's Sky doesn't necessarily need to look as good. It's pretty close. It's got it's got its own things. And its combat's fucking horrible. This game has on foot that actually works. Like the FPS stuff. I got to play a little bit. And I was like, oh, damn. This is fucking fun. Like, it's actually fun. It's almost like you grabbed... You know how No Man's Sky feels like you grabbed a bunch, but it's missing the the gun shooting. Where Starfield, I like the gun shooting, the, the shoot the shooting aspect. So I'm like, it grabbed that, but it didn't grab other parts. This one feels like they haven't come together in a game yet. But the parts that I've played, dude, I'm telling you, I like them a lot. I just don't know if once it pieces together, how you go against No Man's Sky because it doesn't look ancient yet. Um, How's it going to work with the Squadron 52 single player? Squadron game? 52 is a single player, and then you've got your multiplayer that's separate. You've got your open world. So do you beat world. the game and then? Uh, no, you don't. It'll be separate the characters from what I understand. You still have your, you can still okay. play open. S so one of the things Freelancer, which is Chris's other game, was known for is it had a thing called open SP. And you could mm -hmm. open an executable and run a mini server on your PC that was just the world simulation, and then you would play in it on your own, and you could invite friends through LAN and through IP and all that. That's sort of what I'm getting from how, you know, the open side of this runs and how the single-player side of this runs. They are separating them, which nobody, you know, I don't think anybody wants. I just don't really know what people want from it. I want the single-player. I think a lot of people want the multiplayer. I don't really want that because I don't want the chaos of people stealing my shit and smashing my stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like if so you I can paid... still play like the and the full game. No, 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 you could play the full game and the single player game. Yeah, it single player is its own thing with its own ships and all that stuff, but it's its own thing. And then you have the but multiplayer. Is it as big of a scope in terms of what you can yeah. do in it? Do you yeah. think, or is it just like yeah. okay? No, it is. That's it's just it's just that this is contained, has a campaign, has its own thing over here, That's and then cool. you've got your multiplayer over here. But currently, because of the way yeah. it is, it's all mixed. It hasn't mm. been separated yet because they're doing the they're trying to separate that single player. But um I just don't know how you go because the other thing is if we are just all gonna sit here and be like, well, just go play No Man's Sky, well, might as well never ever play anything else. Because I can say that yeah, for any weird. game. I can be like, hey, I sure. played Space Harrier, don't play anything else because this game doesn't have everything day one. So it's an yeah. odd situation, and that game is going into a point to where if it hits in two thousand four 25 at the end or 2026 graphically it looks phenomenal it really mm -hmm. there are things i was flying around a planet just going like oh man there's some really cool stuff going on in this and all the different vehicles and stuff but you also look at uh elite dangerous now elite they started out really lean then exploded and passed uh, star citizen added a bunch of stuff but then they've sort of leaned out now and they've had more issues only recently have they started to sort of build that back up but they stopped console development completely and so a lot of people who got it can't even you know there's no updates coming to that version mm -hmm. to that mm -hmm. platform but yeah. man i don't know dude it's 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 also weird because i used to think star citizen cost a lot and then i look at spider-man 2 and i'm like oh okay maybe mm -hmm. it's not for what it's doing, costing a ton. If you look at what Spider-Man 2 cost, you're like, oh. And yes, I get that it's an IP from Marvel, but it's not really... I mean, there's not a massive difference in the cost. And you look at GTA's coming out and what it's doing, what it's prob what we're probably going to hear, and all these games are rising up in cost. Star Citizen, back in the day, I used to be like, oh my god, it's so much money, it's so much money. And then now that we've had so many leaks on what things cost, you're like, oh. All right. It's definitely way over their initial goal, like way over, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. over their initial goal, 
but they've had scope creep to the point to where yeah, their initial goal doesn't creep. make sense either in what they took in or in yeah. what they planned. It's yeah, it's a it's a it's such an interesting game because um it'll be it'll be something when we get day one it won't be early access we've been doing early access if you buy it you're buying into early access and so anybody who says oh i can't believe this is a scam blah 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 yes welcome to early access technically until they're all released they're all a scam you're getting whatever you're getting that's life if you have done early access before you've done starfield you can't say one's a scam one's not the other that's sorry that's not we can't just sit here and pretend they they are and that is what also bothers me is because I've been burned by it for so long. The expectation of it coming out is like, oh, come on. But then, unlike many early access games I have spent money on, I'm playing it right now. And there's mm -hmm. more in that than most of the early access games I buy into that were more money. you know, Or over the time, maybe two or three of them were more money, not one. But... Yeah, man, it's a weird, it's a weird title. I don't know what I don't know what to think about it because Chris Roberts' gameplay style is my perfect. You know, some people like Kojima or they like Quentin's movies. It's their thing. From what I have been able to track, Chris Roberts is my thing. His style of game seems to fit exactly what like what I like. Details like details. Uh, that I you don't even want to go into why because I don't know why. I'm just saying, um, if some people go to, you know. Some people go to Quentin for certain types of movies. I go to Michael Bay for fun, but I don't go to him for like detailed directorial stuff. But with Chris Roberts' space games, I have found that his space games are exactly what I want whenever I play them. They are. Mm. I he must. He's he's older than me, but maybe his age of simulation when he was playing the older games, maybe something about those crept in his mind and his idea of sim is the same as mine or something i don't quite know and he but, made he made freelancer and now yeah. he's doing uh, star he, citizen and he did uh, he did uh the games with uh luke skywalker uh the um the space games the old ones oh uh, really yeah the x-wing uh, ones yeah uh, no not x-wing okay. the other ones uh it, no it's uh, not called x-wing it's called star it's no um, it's not star wars it's star wars the Rebel? He, uh, right. Wing Commander. Rebel. Wing Commander. Oh, Wing Commander. Yeah. Okay, okay. He did okay, Ultimate. Right. He did Ultima, Wing Commander, <clears throat> Times of Lore. He did Star Lancer, which is one of my favorite games of all time on the on the Dreamcast. And then he did Freelancer, one of my favorite games of all time on PC. And then he's doing Star Citizen. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's mm -hmm. it, it's it's interesting because there's so many developers people always like or they go towards, and I don't really have too many of that. But I definitely mm -hmm. have found that some developers uh, uh the alan wake guys yeah for sure so i'm like that's one of that's yep for me where i'm just like oh whatever he likes i don't know if it's his age and maybe there's something he played that stuck in his brain is good and my brain also thinks it's good but that's for chris it is weird but i was looking at this a couple days ago playing it going damn the way this works is pretty much what i want from a space game so far mm -hmm. but yeah um, yeah, Super Tramp, two dollars. We got into that MMO, and people said Star Citizen. Got into that MMO, and I don't know what that means. But thank you for the two dollars. You rock. What were you gonna say? I just said from what I've seen, there was a there was a very very. It doesn't seem like much, but there was a video showcasing just dropping a uh, a vehicle in, onto a planet, right? Just so that you could use it on the planet, and the process. It's not just like a, you press a button and it goes down from the garage to the ground. You actually have to like engage the lifts. You have to do everything manually. You have to like press buttons and stuff. And that's something yeah. that uh, spoke to me. Yeah. But I don't know how uh, I don't know how complete that game is. I mean, the last thing I saw that really excited me was was that on foot gameplay with stealth and and kind of tackling things your own way that I like a lot. So I don't know how much of that they have in questing. Uh, things to there's do. a lot yeah I, I saw, there's a yeah. there's a lot it's it is it's just such an odd it's dude it's really changed the leaks have changed a lot and a, a lot of people are going to want you to forget about all the leaks because it yeah. will just it destroys a lot of even i'm sure some of my own but the console warrior bullshit arguments sort of defeats a lot of them but mm -hmm. one of the things that's also proven to me is that we were right on the cost of games being it's not that they're too much it's that what we thought was expensive, for example, and it is for sure on Star Citizen, is definitely expensive, but is stunningly not as expensive as you might assume when you start looking at some of the AAA games being made by others. You start seeing those prices going, oh, damn, 
that's one's over a period of time that might be longer or shorter. And we certain nobody wants early access. I want my shit day one. I just want mm -hmm. a day one. I don't want to, I don't want to fuck with this. Um, and I don't want to fuck even with star citizen. I like, I like what I've played, but I just wish it was day one, but whatever we would have got day one back then, I'm going to say, I don't think it would have the improvements I've been seeing now because they've been playing other games and adding them until they cut off the, the, the update. Well, it's and good they, they cut like, off something though. Like yeah. it's very yeah. hard to do, man. I get that. It's very hard to do. Cause you want it to be like the everything game. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's just, oh, it's, it's good. I, man, it's cause I still play, I still play star Lancer and freelancer. So it's, it's, Holy shit. I mean, it would be nice to say I, I can move to star citizen because I would like to get off of those old games, but one thing I did just recently find out is even with No Man's Sky making all the improvements it's made, I have not uninstalled Freelancer. And I think mm -hmm. that probably indicates that whatever is going on in No Man's Sky is not hitting a certain itch, and it may only be a small amount, but whatever it is, it's there. And it mm -hmm. just hasn't been met, and this one feels a little like it might. I think it'll probably be missing some of the, not procedural generation, but some of the exploratory stuff but i don't know mm -hmm. man because i've been exploring like a son of a bitch in it Maltov michelle was in there a couple days ago and she had i think she had played a couple months maybe ago i could be wrong if she's in chat but she was um playing and just being like oh damn this is because i think she was really if i remember right really negative about it when it started and over mm -hmm. time was just like you know what Why do is people this? have such a burning like hatred towards things like that like why why is it such a such a vitriolic thing. Is it because they spent money and feel like... Uh, no, I don't think it's any more than my hatred for early access. It's just one game. Sure. That's the difference. Because I don't like early access, and you'll hear me mention it all the time, but it's never one... It's never the same game. It's spread out mm -hmm. in our conversations. Yeah, same. I really yeah. do... You know what I mean? I feel like this has mm -hmm. just been early access for so long that it's just hard not to look and go, dude... But what's even that's, weirder is the big one, right? Yeah. Like yeah. Daisy's and what's even more and... hilarious is if you see somebody say scam and you start looking at everybody who's working on it and getting paid and have like, you know, their children are now graduating. You're all yeah. scam or just really long developed game. Because yeah, weirdly yeah, yeah. enough, this game has also been playable forever in some yeah. form. There's been. So it's just this odd thing where you, you start. It's just it's it's not really a scam because they are delivering. If it is, but it is a scam. If you say, what was their first date? But then if we say that's a scam, that somebody doesn't hit their first date, then I can acknowledge that there's probably 500 early access games that are scams. And mm -mm -mm. games that we love, by the way. What I'm saying yeah, is yeah. if you miss your date, and that instantly becomes a scam. So, dude, game development's weird, man. It's such mm -hmm. a it's such Especially a spider trying web. to do a lot. Yeah. yeah. And technologically, yeah. Te technology keeps advancing every year, and... You have to adapt, and is there any game like, that oh, you have been early, in, in early access for a while? You personally, that you yeah, are? Escape from Tarkov, yeah, my 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 main that game for a while. For, yeah, there you go. That is such a good still, example. Still not one point oh, man. Still, still not one point oh man. And we we oh, ain't ready man. to release it. We like it, but we ain't ready. No, no dude, no. how long and has Tarkov been around? Well, not it's, as not as long as the Zomboid project. Zomboid, thirteen They're, years, that, man. That's, that's a long time, yeah. Escape yeah. from Tarkov, I, I, I got it in pre-alpha around 2016, 2017. So since then, I've had it, uh, you, know, you know, with the promise of it getting into one point. But I've gotten my money's worth, dude. Could, dude oh, I have a thousand yeah. hours in the game. Like, I, I, I've gotten my money's worth, but, you know. Uh, 2017 was the first closed beta for Tarkov. And so Tarkov is now at its eighth year. Wow. And it's it's still in early access, yeah. That's why I always love it because a lot of times, you know, I won't do it on purpose. Sometimes I will, but whenever I'll, you know, you watch and somebody's like, "Yeah, man, I I, I don't believe I don't believe in early access. I don't like this. What are you playing? Escape from Tarkov." Be like, "Yeah, Dude, you're literally me. playing. You're, you're literally full of shit. You're playing." Yeah, know, yeah, yeah. That's me. Yeah. That's literally me. It happens. Me. <laughs> it happens though. And that's the thing yeah, is, it's yeah. not even really teasing those people. It's just that we all have these rules we put in place, and then two yeah, minutes yeah. later. You're like, well, it's like family. This a family well, member yeah. may be able to treat people a little worse, and you're like, yeah, but the family, you know, it's like Tarkov's I hate druggies, family. But like, yeah, 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 my but yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. <laughs> um, what other ones? Uh, Project Zombioid, uh, uh, Tarkov. Oh, that one's the longest. Uh, Daisy finally got 1.0 in 2019 or something, 2018. So I that's... wasn't even aware that that was out. I wasn't even aware. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Daisy's out. They they changed a lot with that what game. Is going they changed on with these guys losing their mind. Sorry. Yeah, 
they changed stop. engines and stuff. Um, what other there ones? was a recent interview. Okay. Uh, like oh, something dude, that's the one long term. No, this, uh, something I've been waiting for for a while is Gloomwood, which is like a like a thief game. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you I know, know Gloomwood. Uh, Ultra Kill has been in early access for a while, by the same company or yeah. same publisher. So those two come to mind. I'm I'm just waiting. Gloom Gloomwood is the type of game I wouldn't touch it in early access because it's like a short, like a main, you know, linear kind of. You just go through it. So I don't want to ruin the first few levels. I with think early we access. spent a lot of time talking about that when it was first coming out. Gloomwood, did we not? Yeah. Did, was that not Maybe. sort of a like? I feel like there was sort of some positivity behind that or some excitement. Maybe What's from Johnny. Game? Yeah. Gotcha. Is it a, a great game? Is it a, is it early access in all forms? But the name. But oh, but the name. Yeah. Like it's still in it's still in early access, right? Still in early access. But what yeah, I'm saying yeah. is, is it really actually done? And it could be called early access, but they just keep holding on to the early access title. No, no, because it's uh, it's the type of game. It's like it's like releasing only Act One of Baldur's Gate, for example. It's like only the first oh, few damn. levels are there. Like it's not complete. Oh, yeah. really? Okay. Like you can't okay, finish gotcha. the game. Yeah, yeah, Project that's Zombioid, why I'm... bro. That's been done for like nine years. Dude, okay, it has <laughs> so many features. Nine. It's so done. I don't understand. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm sure it's hard for devs to just like call it a 1.0 and release it. Uh, maybe they feel like they need to do something big, but that game, Project Zomboid, you can do so much in that game already. I don't know why they're holding on to that. I have no idea. It's it's really an interesting situation with that game because that game's was prior to Steam's Half-Life 2 um, being packaged in with Steam, you could still, back in the day, kickstart it prior to Kickstarter, prior to Steam or Ooh, anything. Okay. It was yeah. it was like early, earliest of early. It was early, early access. It was prior to all that. And I remember yeah. um, when Reg first started in the podcast, or not in the podcast, but um, he was a patron. And one day, I think this was prior to us even getting Discord, he mentioned that game. And we went back and looked, and it still had its old web page for donation. You know, you could, I'm, I'm sure it's probably still there, but you go, it's it's completely separate from everything else, still being able to be donated to. I wonder what they've made over time. Like, what does a Project Zombioid make if it stays in early access? And by the way, I enjoy the game, it is, but it is, it's done. It, as in, any other game would have called themselves complete, and then they're adding features by now. I don't yeah. know what's going on there. I think it's just, it's sort of now a joke. Almost. Maybe they had like a plan where it's like, we're going to have this on 1.0, but they haven't hit that yet. And they're, you know, yeah. just wanting to. So. Yeah. Um, it, it does seem, it, especially when you look at the, not procedure, the zombie style. I don't know how to describe it. A little bit procedural generated. But when you look at like those games where it's just a horde style stuff, those games seem to be in early access a long time because it's never ending. Yeah. And they can just say, mm -hmm. oh, we're working. Oh, we're working. We're adding know. this. We're adding that. Scope yeah. creep. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've definitely seen it with that. I would say I don't think I'll ever go back to Day Z, but I do. I think I've only played Day Z like 10, maybe Maybe two dozen, maybe a dozen. You know, times, I've probably with that. I've one. only ever played but it. I like what I played. Early access back from like 2013 to 2015. I have 80, 90 hours or something, and mm -hmm. I never played full. I never played it after 1.0. Funny how that works. Yeah, I yeah, bought it I, back in 2013. Do you yeah. think that you were more invested in the community of building it than you were in the player playing of it? Uh, I think at the time it was released. Uh, survival zombie mmo type half mmo type server games weren't a thing rust i think was also being made and and coming out like they just started so it was something new to me and now i feel like uh there's a lot of those daisy does some really cool things but i haven't had the i think i need uh an investment or something me like the only reason i'd play it now is for like rp servers or something mm -hmm. you know what is good if, if uh that's I don't know if true it's Sorry. What is uh, surging right now? I've seen a shroud and a couple others, lyric and and summit and stuff play is armored, armor reforger or something. Are they like rappers or There's something? Like a, who are those? It's people? Like an RP server there or something like that that people are playing. Hmm. Armor reforger is the new arma. I don't know what the hell it is. An arma yeah, game. That's but what it is. Arma four. Yeah, is well, it no, like it's a, not brand new. Like a foundation. Uh, Reforger is basically a re not a resetting, but it's a rejiggering of the engine and uh, and its uh, creation kits and all that and what you can do. You can do crazy stuff in it. 
And yeah. the thing about Arma is a lot of it is so I just played Arma about three it would be about three months ago. One of the nice things about it is you can do a lot of live stuff. So you can be a DM in it, basically. So yeah. I can put you guys the here's the biggest problem with Arma. Let me get this out of the way. Arma runs like absolute hammered shit. It does not matter the power of your system, the look of that game and its performance do not ever meet up, ever, not even close. Even on the highest settings, Arma does no longer look good, and it still runs like hammered shit. Even on the fast systems, you see it all the time. You're talking like 60 to 90 on the blinding systems when you know combat comes, comes in, and it doesn't look good enough to run like that, not even close. The big positive, man, is you can throw people in, assign them like uh, positions as those characters, and then just start actually throwing stuff in live in the game while you're playing. You can have DM modules where you basically say, I'm going to be the DM. You guys go here. You have to, and I, you can, I mean, throw all kinds of files in, MP3s, all that stuff really simply so somebody can basically play a military D&D game quite quickly. That's really it, cool. It is. But it looks fucking horrendous, man. Yeah. It's and you know me, I'm a huge Arma fan. But that game is so far past its um you know how we were just talking about Star Citizen is actually somehow still looks current. Mm -hmm. Arma doesn't look current. Arma didn't look current four years ago or five years ago. It's got some good textures on some stuff, but its animation is horrendous. Getting into stuff is like Are they not improving that for four? Dude, I think the only game that that improved, and the game itself wasn't improved, was Red Dragon on the consoles. And it looked better from a like a presentation standpoint, but mm -hmm. it was missing 90% of the other stuff. I, I, I don't know what's going on with that. I love Bohemia. I'll follow them. I think they changed their name, but I'll follow them forever. I like I love Arma. Love it. But, man, it... I wish it, we were talking about games coming along to replace others like Star, uh, Starfield and Freelancer and stuff. I wish a game would replace Arma um, or that they would replace it themselves because God damn, son, go look at the videos. I know ignoring that Spud or whatever, whatever the fuck his name is, the, those guys are streaming. They're watching. If you ignore the small screen, blow it up to a full screen, watch that game. I guarantee you. Oh, no, it you, looks like trash. Oh, okay. I thought, okay. Yeah, I yeah. was just making sure. But the fun part is the RP part, right? Yeah, yeah like of course. The, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and just uh, people being able to make their own games within within the game. Like, it's a yeah. foundation. Have they been doing that? Uh, Shroud. Has Shroud been doing that? Yeah. Make yeah, it, yeah. Or, yeah. Hmm, interesting. So yeah, I just saw them fucking around, blowing up I called them Sprout. Stuff, sorry. No, no, Spud or something. I can't remember what I called them. Shroud. Yeah. Um... <laughs> Sorry, there's a lot. There's probably no, somebody named Spud or 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 Shirk or whatever the fuck that's getting Summit? some extra views right now. No, I'm just saying. Uh, I'm saying no uh, matter yeah. what I mistake and call some other person, uh, there's probably somebody on Twitter right now or Twitch going, "Hey, I got five more subs, so yeah. I'm happy." <laughs> when you when you're when you're watching these guys, are you watching it for the like? For the building aspect, or are you watching it for what? Like, why are you watching that game in particular being streamed? Oh, I just I noticed uh, Armory Forger being streamed, and uh, and I'm very interested in Arma Four, and I I didn't know what the hell Armory Forger was if it was like a just an engine. And you were trying to figure out why it was coming or... back. So, yeah, almost... I was trying to figure out what I was see. going on, why a lot of people were playing it. That's a good point. Um, I'm going to look that up and see if there's any new news, because I feel like that crossed my desk within the last three months as well. Like, yeah. Okay, so four weeks ago, Armor Reforged did a official 1.1 update. Mm -hmm. Resistance Ops. Um, oh, it's asking me for my age. I hate that shit, because why mm, would it ask when it knows time. every person can just scroll down and pick... 1901 some, or whatever. Some law thing. It, but I mean, what a weird law. Legal. You have yeah. to lie. That's the law. The law is basically saying, please lie before continuing. I mean, yeah. It, yeah, it, yeah. because the only people who, like, they would want to catch would be lying. Um, civilian assets, AI improvements, but no gra lighting improvements. That's good. Huh, cool. Man, it looks like balls. Yeah. Fuck. 
Armor's like old iTunes. It's got a trillion things going on, and none of it is optimized enough to make that sludge move. I think that's. I feel like that's a little. Yeah, I feel like that's a, that's a, that's a little fair. That feels fair. Yeah, yeah, that feels fair. That game's that it, it a game lot of, a lot of, past its day. A lot of insane trends came out from Arma, like uh, like battle yeah. royales, uh, like the Daisy trend with survival games and stuff. So a lot of those games that allow modders to do stuff create trends. It's weird. Like uh, mobiles came from there. It's so yeah, weird that I trends. started doing mod organizer and mod manager and Arma videos. Started. Yeah. That's how I started YouTube. Like, and by the way, that would have been Arma three, I think. So it's not. It's the same fucking. Game. The entire generation of what I've done has all still been on the same title from them. I. They also did an alien one. I don't know if you saw that, where they did a a, a scenario of events involving an alien landing and the military going. Yeah. They did That's a. Really you can cool. buy it too. I think it's a separate campaign because I remember getting it from them, um, like as a gift. I th I don't even think there was a review. I think it was just like, mm -hmm. hey, we're doing this cool thing. They're also the ones. I, I probably can't say that on. I mean, no, he's gonna get in trouble, right? Yeah. They sent me a plant, but we found out later, said plant was illegal to ship into Oregon. They sent me a plant from where they were, like a live plant, was and it I got weed? it. It was it was something like that, where like invasive, or it maybe okay. had a mite on it or something. Maybe had a bug okay. on it that you some know, salvia or some shit. Yeah, or so, no, I, they had some DMT. They said, "Yeah, I watched some DMT plant. They're all, "Do not eat that plant. It was the wrong plants, man. That was our main <laughs> graphics guy." Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know yeah. what it was, but I remember getting it, and going, "Oh, interesting." I threw it away because fucking, I don't want a plant. I mean, like, no, I don't know. Do you do you have do you like plants? Because that's just not something I, I really. roll with. I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't, I, I always say like, hey, maybe I should get some plants, but I don't really have the, a plant thing. You know how some people have a plant thing? Like they, yeah. they like plants, they get plants, they take care of them. I don't have a plant plant thing. Like It would look nice, but then it'd die because I wouldn't water it, I guess, right? My wife's that way with fish, dude. She. Oh, no, they she, die. I, no, because I'll keep those some bitches alive forever. I <laughs> yeah. love fish, man. I like yeah, them. Yeah. I don't want to keep. I, what I mean is, when I get one, I like it. I won't. I well, you never, grew up in a fish. Well, plant. I grew up in a fish plant, but but I I just mean like a beta. I love um I love like ter you know the beta fish, Siamese fighting fish. I love the way they look and all that kind of stuff. Right. But man, she'll get them. She'll get all excited, and then about a month later, I'll look at the tank and be like, mm mm. That tank hasn't been cleaned a long fucking time. Uh -oh. Like, you know, and then Dude, it's all. Can you uh, get like a self cleaner, self cleaning tank? No, or something, not or? for tanks, man. Tanks are, yeah. fish tanks are, you have to keep it perfect because it's, remember, there. imagine if like all of our sustenance and intake was yeah. not through the air, it was through a liquid. You're breathing, yeah. the fish is taking all of it in and it's like high pH, low pH. You know, it's different than humans. It's, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. rough, man. You got to vacuum it and then. Deep rabbit hole. We did get shrimp, which are sweet as hell. I've never had freshwater sh shrimp, Food? but they you, no, they you got to make sure you have fish that won't kill them. We luckily do, oh. but we got the they're called uh, ghost shrimp. They're about that big. They're not small, and they just go around and they eat a lot of the algae that is hard to get rid of, even with an algae nice. eater. It's called. Do, it's you called, can get like fish that clean the glass, right? Like the algae little eaters. Suckers. Yeah, but the problem with algae eaters is they love. You can get some that'll kill this or that will eat this, like. Um, there's a term for it, but it's like this really thin angel hair kind of moss and shrimp uh -huh. love it. So everything else was cleaned, but these this moss was on some of the live plants. We bought these shrimp and they're like, fuck yeah, bitches. And we got 12 nice. of them and they're just yeah. cruising. So you see a God fish dang. swim by and you'll just see all these shrimp like a dance in, you know, almost like a, a avatar or something. They're just like Ooh, yeah. in the air. You're just like, let's do this shit. They're fucking That's great, really cool. man. They're cool. I'm sure they'll yeah. all die at some point. I've only had a but... terrarium before because I've had had a snake and I've had a you've had, a, had a bearded bearded dragon. Oh, yeah. bearded dragons yeah. are cool. Snake would be hard. Yeah. Did you like like it? I, I mean, I'm sure it didn't like me. I mean, I, I you know I hung out with it, but but it was it was kind of every day it would go to the outer rim up and 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 learn how to escape. And yeah. my roommate was is deathly afraid of snakes, very afraid of snakes, even though it was just a corn snake. But one of these days it escaped uh, and, and it was funny and he was very scared. And I was a bit sad because Athena escaped. But I also had a bearded dragon who was pretty chill. 
you know. Bearded dragon would be fun to get. I'm always bothered a little bit by animals that can't show love or whatever because I that's why I like yeah, dogs. Not, they don't give a shit. They, yeah, they try. Fish. People try to be like, hey, look, my snake oh, is like dude, laying on. down next to me. It loves me, but it's just measuring you up so it Bro, knows if it can squeeze you to death or not. it thinks of you yeah. as a mobile warm rock. Warm, that is yes. all it's doing, and it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. But yeah, I'll have people... This is Chester, and Chester likes or the those, color blue. With the alligator and he loves pets? Watching, and you're like, come on, dude. Oh, yeah, the alligator. Yeah. They always end oh, up bad, though. Oh, he loves though. me, but I they're can't always, put my... Yeah. yeah, yeah but I yeah, can't put dude. my... He loves me. Oh, no, he's just chomping through they're my just, hand because I had me... You yeah. know, gotta be... You're like, dude, seriously, man? No. Just don't. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you're not yeah. bargaining with a reptile. You know? You're yeah, not sitting you're not. back going like, okay, I'll give you this, I'll give you that. They'll just be like, I will take everything that goes no. within my mouth, and you will live with it, or you will kill me. They do that with bearded... Would they do that with bearded dragons too, where they go like, "Look, it's waving its arm at me. It loves me." But they do that as a form of like submission to see if you're chill or not. Coolbond says, cool "My button. my wife bought a thirty gallon tank and got some angelfish and some snails and some mollies. Then she got frogs, and then two weeks later they were all gone, like just gone." Oh, I wonder if one maybe ate all of the others. I do think we had we had like an angel, and then we had a big. Um, algae eater but then the freeze killed all of them but one we think but what Shit. was weird was we never found the angel fish and so i had told my wife i'm like i think it was probably sick and because our algae eater is huge and they will occasionally eat like they'll definitely eat something that's rotting depending on what it is i don't know i'm like he's pretty big too i think that dude was straight up like angel fish can't get away now motherfucker maybe the angel fish was a dick to him and then it got cold, and the angel fish was like, I'm going to sleep over here. And that algae eater was like, fuck you. I've hated you since the moment you got into this tank. But he's gone. We never found him. So, And he was Damn. big. So it's like, I'm assuming, or he's under the rock somewhere as a, as a, as a little skeleton. We also it's got assassin, assassin snails, but we ended up getting... So a lot of people will be like, oh, snails are clean algae. First of all, they all only do a certain thing, and they don't. they won't go... They're balanced. They're nature. They're not humans, right? So there's certain things they won't do. We got assassin snails. I'm not lying to you, man. They're supposed to kill other snails, right? So we got these assassin snails. We're like, okay, here we go. Because we had these little tiny pest snails. We put the assassin snails in there. And I'm telling you, somehow, somehow, we got the, we got eight PETA snails. They won't kill other things. They're complete vegetarians. So all these other snails are going around, and our snails are like, right by them. And they have not in, them, in, <laughs> yes, in a year, in a year, we've never seen them eat a snail. Snails are still a problem, and those dudes will cruise past. They they won't put their, they have the, the little, like, a horn proboscis thing that they usually grab shit with to eat. Mm -mm. Nope. Nope. They just, they're like, fuck it. We're, I don't know. Vegan snails. It, I swear to God, everything we get is the opposite of what it says. It'll be like, this is an algae eater, so we'll get it. And I don't, it's just fucking barely, it'll barely eat any algae. You're like, dude, what are you doing? It's worthless. I don't know. Maybe they're bothered by a giant godlike creature that with a big beard yelling at them through the glass. Yeah. Maybe I'm scaring yeah. the shit out. Maybe I should Are you stay. yelling at them? Are you being no, like, hey, eat no, those fucking dude, snails? No, dude, I'm not an idiot. No, I love <laughs> No, we have, like, we set it up. We have, like, all the lights and shit. We even have daytime, nighttime kind of stuff, you know, because oh, you got to make cool. sure that they're that's not sweet, stressed man. out. Because if you leave the lights on all the time, some fish will straight up lose their mind because there's no nighttime. And they'll just be like, it's constant war in this bitch. Yeah, it's like being in those loony, loony rooms. That's yes, where the lights white. on and the music's yeah. always playing. <laughs> the doom, whole time. Doom. You're like, no. Oh, my God, the one in life. Lost. Like, the one in Lost yeah, that with was the bad. chair. That was, oh, my God. That there's made me one in... Uh, the one about them going and killing Osama, it's um, like O Dark 30 or something. I can't remember what it's called. Okay, but yeah, they, yeah. They're playing like really loud music and clanging of of pots and pans and stuff oh, where man. they're trying to interrogate people. I'm like, I, even I was watching it going, oh, fuck, fuck that. Dude, your brain. And um, I know a lot of studies will show that you can't let it be rhythmic because a human can get numb to that. So it goes yeah, up yeah. and down. So they even turn the audio up and down. And then the oh it, my God. random interspersed audio that you can. So you're consistently waiting for a lap. Dude, talk about what hell would be. I mean, can you yeah. imagine how quickly you would lose your fucking mind if you were in there? And it was just like. Yeah, fuck that. Oh, dude, it's ridiculous yeah. sounding. Um, Zero Dark 30 time Joe Go says. Time Go Joe. Let's see. Anything before Assassin's Creed spinoff with snails? Oh, 
I was reading that just for a second, thinking it was going to be about Assassin's Creed and some new news. I think the only thing I saw was that, uh, did you see that Assassin's Creed Red, somebody leaked a screenshot of the title screen? No. No, I didn't see that. You know what? Good. Because it doesn't fucking matter. It's a title screen. We have now got to the yeah. point to where there it is a huge news story to release a... <laughs> Everyone's so hungry yeah. all the time. Yeah, thirsty. Be thirsty. Sated. Cannot be sated. Yeah, thirst cannot be quenched. Uh, I did see um, Splinter Cell remake thing. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, that's this they, they week, right? They changed their cover or something, like a cover page into... into Maybe a, next week. Yeah. And you, you play or something. Yeah, I think they're going to announce it soon or talk and... about it. Slay the Spire. I don't remember if you like it. Slay the Spire 2 has yeah, a reveal nice. trailer. Oh, shit. Oh, and, and, yeah. and Wizard of Legend 2. Wizard of Legend. And the, what the fuck are you talking about? I've never heard of that game. What's it called? It's Wizard a, of Legend. Wizard of Legend. It's a, it's a roguelike. Yeah, yeah. Wizard. It, does, it sounds like it's missing a word. There's like spells and you combo spells and stuff. It's, it's pretty oh, cool. Oh, I think I do remember this one. And you're saying that that uh, got a trailer or got a... Like a, sec it a got a gameplay plan? trailer. Yeah, gameplay trailer. I didn't even see it yet because my friend linked it to me literally while on the podcast. No shit. So, well, tell yeah, your friend Wizard to fuck of off. We're in the we're in the middle of a podcast. We're driving. We don't have time for his bullshit. Just be like, dude. Oh, Eric says it looks way talk better than off. one. Oh, and there's it? co op now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Polygon wow. or sprite based. Oh, this look looks way better. Uh, uh, the first one was sprite based, and right. now this one's polygon. So oh, cool. there you go. Oh. There you go. Wow, this looks very good. Coolabon Holy says, shit, do you guys remember good. when people were tripping over the title screen of Starfield? Yes, it was one of my favorite times. It was one of the most enjoyable trolls I have continued to be a part of, was trolling people, teasing the uh, Starfield Starfield menu, Starfield start screen. We oh live in God, interesting the times, man. The physiognomy. The physiomatology of the <laughs> flippicus <laughs> of title a, screens. That, I mean, dude, guy. dude, man. He's like, still he's he's going crazy right now about uh, oh god um, uh, hell divers politics some shit I don't know what the fuck he's dude some it reminds me a little Tim Sweeney man yeah. I remember when when Reg would be on and he'd mention because I would purposely screen myself from those people like I I'm pretty good at Twitter's pretty like. I'm deconnected to. I don't even go oh, to man, Twitter I, much anymore. Teach me, in, man. I, I, don't I don't go, go to Twitter. Because... I don't go to Facebook or any of those. Like I'll forget yeah. to even post sometimes different things. But I will say that Tim loses his mind sometimes. Um, you know, which we've seen the leaks that he emailed Valve and we're like, "You asshole!" <laughs> but there's something about that that I think is funny. But yeah, there's there, we we have some unique ones. Remember when Derek Smart used to be that person? You remember Derek Who's Smart? Derek Smart. Derek Smart was the uh, developer. Derek Smart followed me for years. I, he may still follow me. Um, he was a developer of a series of space games that Battle Cruiser, I believe, two thousand something Battle Cruiser, and they were these games that they never really hit where he wanted them to hit. Right? Sure. He wanted them to hit in the do everything. You can do this. You can, you know, RTS. You can land. You can do on land, but it never really worked out. He got a lot of shit, but the thing about Derek is, if you talked about his shit on Twitter, be prepared. And so the joke was, if you said Derek Smart's three uh, name three times, like Candyman, he would show up somewhere. And yeah. one time out of the blue, I was talking about something, and I go onto Twitter, and he was following me and responded. And I was like, damn, it wasn't a bad thing. I don't even remember what I was saying. I think I would review the game, and he might have just said, I watch Derek's reviews. But I thought is it was... It was sort of hilarious in the timing. What were you going to say? Is it like that Japanese, I think it's the Tekken director or something that just blocks everyone on Twitter? If if you say oh, anything stupid. No, Derek will you. Derek will do the opposite. So come Jason Schreier, for instance, you. one of the journalists that's always around, he'll block anybody. He like if you said the color yeah, yeah, blue, yeah. he's like, I'll block you. That By yeah, the way, yeah. it's Twitter. You should be able to block. You can do whatever you want. We block yeah, people yeah. On, on YouTube all the time. If somebody's a dick, in you don't want to see him. Yeah. Well. Yeah, yeah. True that, right? My Discord has some blocked people. Your Discord? I don't block yeah, people. I block How do you block somebody in Discord? You can't block you right somebody. You right-click on oh, their you name mean and the I'm... mute or something? Where? But block them. The problem with Discord... Oh, but wouldn't that just be for DMs? Are you saying you found a way to have you... their... Because when I see, so, I see that yeah. this person has been muted or whatever, so I, I just don't use it because I still yeah, see yeah, that they're you... posting. Yeah, you still see that they're posting. It's stupid. Yeah. Isn't that weird? It's almost like yeah, yeah. 
You know, I don't want to see my ex-girlfriend banging that guy, and they it keep sending you, you photos see... with a censored over their balls. And yeah, you're yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're still fucking. Yeah, it makes you want to like. Okay, yeah. I, now I'm curious. It, right. right? It's, it makes it's you want to click it. It's the weirdest <laughs> yeah. system in the world. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. I don't. That that went off. That went yeah. off the rails. But um, yeah, Derek Smart is uh, yeah Battle Cruiser. I think were those were those games. But he was a single independent um a developer who. By the way, released some of them worked, some didn't, but he actually released games. It's just that they never achieved anywhere near what he wanted. And then if somebody complained about it, he'd be like, you know, he'd be on them. It was it was a yeah. unique time. But we have a lot mm -hmm. of those kind of people now, for sure. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Battle Cruiser was possibly the most disappointing POS I've ever played. Time to go, Joe says that. Man, I don't even see how that's possible with so many games. But I do agree that um Many of them had bugs you couldn't get around. They had uh, his games. I mean, they had bugs. Yeah, it was. Uh, it, they were they were pretty bad. But man, had had a lot of shit games. I still think Gene Rain was worse. Uh, ugly versus attractive title screens debate coming soon. No, no. Time to go says I tweeted. It. I mean, he was so nasty. Yeah, I think tw Twitter is great to be nasty. Twitter's hilarious, man. I love mm. to be. A, I mean, Twitter to me is not. Supposed to be real. It may have been. You know, years people. Ago, some people get their like, news from there, and which I find really fucking weird, man. That, that what kind of news? Me. You mean they're it like world me. life like politics, news from Twitter? World. Yeah, yeah, and it's bad because <laughs> because that just goes to what, what I was saying before. They just live in their bubbles. They're getting extremely biased news or stupid but takes. I, I don't know. I, I did see a family member one time getting news from Facebook, and they DM'd me on something. I'm like, by oh, the way, no. that is not at all. Like, scientifically, that is not at all what's happened. And I sent them stuff, and they're like, oh, okay, thank you. I got it on Facebook, and I didn't know. And I'm like, dude, whatever's going on on Facebook, I don't, Facebook you know, is, yeah, I tweet this fine. podcast. I tweet reviews. I'll respond to people who ask me questions about stuff on Facebook. But for the most part, I treat Twitter, Facebook, threads, all that stuff as what they are, which is just absolutely hilarious frivolity. I oh my love God. fucking around on those. I, I find oh that God. the only real source of use that they have. There's not a lot of use really from those. I mean, I guess I would say if an earthquake happens and people are like, this earthquake happened, the use is no, because I mean, news websites have it. Like, I don't really know what you get I, from those. The gaming, tracking the of friends, online I guess. gaming community on Twitter, you just see people that you don't think are real. Like, imagine you'd be. You'd say to yourself, imagine hanging out with that person in real life. Is that how they would act? No. You know, calling people X-bots or ponies or whatever. And it's so weird. I don't see those people anywhere else, man. I don't and think 90% think... of the people I talk to who do have any kind of persona like that on Twitter or whatever are not like that. Like, I know that it, yeah. I know that I that people have been like, oh, man, Carrick teased me or Carrick joked or Carrick, you know, dropped this. That's mean. That is pretty much me. I do like to joke. I do like to tease. But uh, the difference between a random person and a friend is that they know you and they know those things. And sure. unfortunately, for whatever reason, I don't change. What I've noticed is that some people are even meaner or they're really vile on Twitter. When I've talked to them, YouTubers or what have you, where I'm like, whoa, this person's Twitter is really aggressive. It's really blah, blah, yeah, blah. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. not what they are like on mm -hmm. in real life at all. In fact, yeah, yeah, there yeah. it, it, it's they actually it usually up. yeah, it's very very um, it it's it's like yeah, it's just the rock star out. It, you know, when you walk out on stage, but the moment you go back, you're like, all right, everybody, let's have some tea and crumbs. <laughs> you know, it's yeah, definitely yeah, yeah. over. And I would find that probably difficult is all. I, I mm -hmm. don't think it's I don't think it's a positive that I do a certain thing or a negative. I think it's just that that would be a lot of energy to figure out which version you're going to like be. Yeah. Yeah. Which version? Um, let's see. Literally no other social media is quoted. Expect Twitter place where everything breaks expect twitter i think he meant except twitter right uh the deagle says twitter is great for following sports l i in my honest opinion oh oh inner following sports what does that even mean though deagle do you mean following sports teams or do you mean just following sports like what would that mean like if you want baseball news sports or news? something but i mean why wouldn't you just go to a sports news channel or something because i would find with twitter 
that if I go to those kind of, if I see random people tweeting about something, they have a tendency to output more than ESPN. So if I follow them on Twitter, they would replace ESPN, and therefore it wouldn't be as useful to me. It's weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sports news often doesn't have an angle, though. What? Sports news doesn't have an angle? I don't know what that means. Oh, um, like an opinion? Oh, of course it does. Sports news is like one of the absolute worst yeah. ever. Like so that's what I'm trying to figure out what he means. Oh, it's Oregon yeah, Fresh. Who fucking an knows angle. what he means? Oregon, what are you doing in our chat, you goofball? An angle. I think yeah. he means like a trying like to prove agenda. a certain position. But they absolutely do. I mean, like this is sort of what it's known for. It just seems right. weird to me. Unless it's yeah, like yeah. somebody detached or something. You know, like a detached group. Um. What else do we got before we wrap it up? Before we wrap it up and tell um, these guys to uh, go enjoy their next couple of I don't of know. Days. I just had a little thing about what you would want to see from like a, a Splinter Cell remake or just stealth games in general mm -hmm. in this day and age. If you want it to be like a pure stealth game or, you know, because games have elements from every game. So how do you do a stealth game in this day and age? Are you talking about Splinter Cell itself? Just Splinter Cell? Because um, do you want to see a third person Splinter Cell? Not a first person, right? Um, I, I don't mean I don't mind first person, but yeah, okay. obviously to keep it like how it was, it'd be better if it's third person. But do you think they'd add all the fluff that games have today, like open world and uh, and the ability to tackle objectives how you want and not play stealthy or, you know, how, no, how would they even do it? I do not think they are. We talking about Ubisoft? I uh, like, uh, yeah, Splinter Cell. But I was talking about like stealth games in general if they were made today because we're not seeing a lot oh, of them other not than like a... hitman i which think is stealth a is stealth. generally and refreshingly absent of a ton of checks but i will say that weirdly enough shadow gambit had its own internal achievements that were great they weren't like shit achievements they weren't like trophies they were real ones that were in the game mm -hmm. so you would do certain mm -hmm. things with certain attacks and you would get unlocks of story data it was actually quite cool or, or you know real specific things that was rare, right? And you're right. I think I think stealth is almost um, not a protected type of game, but nobody's figured that out yet. I mean, the only thing you could say is like kill ten people with a head, you know, or with like a, a choke or something like that. But that's not really in the game. That's you can turn those off. I think stealth. A lot of the stealth games I play don't have those. They don't have a lot of the what I don't even know what you'd call that. A lot of the extra stuff. I think you're pretty mm -hmm. safe. I don't feel like Splinter Cell for like, some reason would do a, it. Like playing a stealth game now and you're like, well, look at, you know, Ghost Recon. You can do stealth, but you can also go in uh, and have right. it. Why would we make only a stealth game or something? Maybe a oh, lot of them are yeah. thinking that. Or... Yeah, dude, that that's like, why would Superman not just kill everybody when criminals get away and kill people that he put in jail? Yeah, yeah. yeah. if you have the ability to shoot, why would you stealth? I think what's taught, sure. here's what I think like a Splinter Cell does well. When they say, okay, it does well and it's also terrible because I just thought of a terrible example. I do like it when they say you can't make sound because that person has a gun to the person's head. I can deal with that. Sure. But what I don't like is when the game will just say if a person sees you, you will instantly fail and you can't figure out why. Like they're going to hit an alarm. I'm like, well, if an alarm happens, people come and I could sh still try to take those guys out. But I mm -hmm. do like hostage stuff, which happens in like the SWAT game. Uh, it happens in a couple SWAT sims where they have like, you know, yeah. you can't do that. I think that all works. I just don't think you need to worry about it. I don't feel like stealth games. I feel like Ubisoft would still do a Splinter Cell somewhat like because Splinter Cell, they can add into Border. They can add that into the other games if they want mm -hmm. and get their micros or whatever. I just think. I just think they would probably do what they did with the last one, which wasn't necessarily hugely popular. But I don't see any reason why there would be add-ons. What would you add on in a stealth game? Like, what would you pad a stealth game with? Um, I, no, it's not in, even in padding. I, oh. I personally, I, I would like to see. Uh, I mean, really good AI for stealth games, where where they react yeah. to a lot of variability and stuff. For example, somewhat like good. killing a friend. <laughs> yeah, just yeah. somewhat better. You know, yeah. more better detection, better just reactions right. to what you're doing. You know, better like seeing dead bodies and yeah. reacting to that or react you know stuff like that but um obviously a lot of games have stealth in them but they're not stealth focused like i'm playing yeah. horizon right now and 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 just the 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 just the act of 
you know, infiltrating outposts and it's not a stealth game, it just gave me a little bit of satisfaction because I miss stealth games. Mm -hmm. So yeah, for it to be like a pure stealth game, um, yeah, you'd have to be underpowered, obviously, but I feel like they can't they can't take away the uh you know, if you get noticed, I don't want the game to game over. Mm -hmm. I want it to still play out. Maybe they're a lot stronger. But in, in the minds of the devs, I don't want them to think that... I just want stealth games, even though there are games that do stuff and do a lot of other stuff. I just want a company to focus on stealth itself and just perfect that way more than we've seen in the past couple of years. What? Because in the you... past couple of years, stealth was just an element. So it wasn't really fixated around it. I think Dishonored was probably the last, you know, stealth game. Dude, this is unfortunately a good point. Because you know how once you can go, once you once you go a certain way, you never go back. I'll just say it that way. But, <laughs> so when you look at GTA, um, once you could get out of the car, there was a lot of times where I heard people say, well, why would I ever just do a racing game? Or this game doesn't have the, the ability to ride motorbikes and cars. Well, why would I play that if I can play this and it's got both? I do think stealth at times probably does have that difficulty of, well, why would I play this this stealth game if it's really restrictive and really hard if I can just play Horizon with dinosaurs yeah. and have some main... How do you combat yeah. that? Good story and good... Uh, uh, an absolute reasoning, mind-pulling suspense story with... Michael Ironside, fuck anybody who doesn't want him. Michael Ironside's back, and it's a big story where it pulls you in. It's current, uh, or it tells his story maybe through different missions. Here's the thing, Abzi. I was tell I was trying to explain this to people. Nobody agreed with me, but I still think I'm right. I think a Splinter Cell going to a new guy is not a good idea until you tell all of Michael, Irons uh, Michael Ironside's story as Sam Fisher. I think a Splinter Cell that was a little like a Metal Gear where you went all the way back to his first missions. You did some of those missions, and then you jumped forward. You told some story there in the 1980s with some missions there, showed the different tech. Then you go forward into the 1990s. You show some different tech, show him. Then you go into now, you got different tech, and you tell a story that involves Sam Fisher start to finish. Uh, any questions we've missed, maybe they answer what's going on with Echelon, all that stuff. And then if you want to say this is the final thing with Sam Fisher and Splinter Cell, that's fine. I that's would cool. be, I would love to jump. And and that way you can force the stealth because back then there weren't drones. See, this is weird. This is popping up in a lot of D&D &D games right now. It's a weird aside, but I just want to point out drone warfare and stuff has actually caused some D&D &D worlds and campaigns and fictions to break. Because, for example, Cyberpunk doesn't have a lot of drones. And we see drones in warfare right now happening all the time. And there's a lot of role players, a lot of people who build worlds, including authors who are actually stating the current changes to AI and drones are affecting their fiction, what they need to write to tell a true story of cyberpunk in 30 years. Do we have a future or is cyberpunk going to change the entire way? Like, is it going to be internal where humans go upload their mind and now your cyberpunk actually has to do with you and your fat body, like Matrix, you know, sitting in a cube somewhere. Surrogates, I think. Surrogates. Was... Yeah. yeah. So that that's what's interesting to me is what story could you tell? Because um, there's a lot of future tech in Splinter Cell that would, you could have a drone cannon that knocks it out of the sky, but you can't go too far before things start, you start looking at it going, dude, what's Sam Fisher able to do as one guy? So I mm -hmm. think the idea of having him go back and forth, what if at the end of the game, it's it ends and it's like Sam Fisher is no more. Now it's the entire team. And then you move into a multiplayer game in the future where now you have to have people who are together because one person, you know, that's always been not real anyway. Right. Like James Bond, one guy killing a bunch of people, blah, blah, blah. I think having one last story with Sam Fisher right now actually would work fiction wise, but it's not going to be too long before a lot of our fictions don't make a lot of sense. You know, you'd have to say, like, in an alternate world where technology did not advance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Fallout so, type thing, yeah. Yeah, exactly, a Fallout kind of thing. But, dude, I love the idea of, of doing real stealth. I just don't know. I don't know. Ubisoft, yeah, and you can progressively add, like, brand new mechanics as yeah. you go up the years. And well, we talked about change. this with Cyberpunk. If they ever did a Cyberpunk Assassin's Creed with, like, chameleon cloaks where, you know, you no longer have to worry about blade you know going into grass but you have to worry about the energy power of the cloak and how long it can make you look like everybody else or disguise you there's futuristic stuff you can do 
But with, mm -hmm. with Splinter Cell trying to hinge on reality, there's some unfortunate realities that are like they make stealth obsolete <laughs> they make stealth obsolete dude have you seen some of the drone footage where it's like you know from like 200 miles they're seeing some yeah. dude hiding behind a tree and unfortunately you see what happens to that dude hiding behind the tree right it's well it's, they added drones to ghost recon and everyone hated that so uh rogue uh, uh which ghost did they add them to uh the black order black black what was the last one Ghost Streak on not Wildlands. Though. Oh, oh, you mean, uh, uh, yeah, dude. Oh, yeah, I had uh, drones and break shit. Breakpoint or break breakpoint. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah oh yeah. man, dude. They, they they hated it so much that now they, they have an option it. to disable. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> disable the drones. Man, I remember <laughs> reviewing that game and I hit like the fiftieth Husqvarna and I was like, okay, whoever made these motorbikes would never have a contract again. And then. I, I shot somebody and that drone flew over and I remember I was playing it by myself and I was like, or I was talking to myself, just going like, are you kidding me? Again, yeah, yeah, they were yeah. so um, often in that game. Dude, that's, man, that's a memory. It's been a long time, right? Because I believe every rumor I've heard is they're still working on a new one. So that and Splinter Cell both. I, haven't yeah, heard. I would yeah, love to see a, a good Splinter Cell. I just want, yeah, that was the, man, that was, Ghost Recon was the last thing to do like co-op espionage and what you were types. worried about what um, you're saying is ghost recon already let you do a little bit so yeah this, and so you're trying to so it's in. like it's like what would you do with prince of persia when you have assassin's creed what would you do with splinter cell when you yeah. have ghost recon dude i'm telling you you know what i mean yeah yeah and we all have the ability weirdly enough on twitter we have the ability to look up if things are real or not really quickly now yeah or if there's examples of things not real but it's it's weird because you might see something in a game now and go, is that a real device? Where when you were a kid, you were like, oh, it's a disguise that you just put over your face, like Mission Impossible. Remember, you'd see the first time Tom Cruise would take a hat off and, or take his face off, and you're like, oh, does that exist? You find out later, <laughs> no, it doesn't. But now we're getting to a tech to where, you're like, what does exist right now? What can we right. do? But it's easy yeah. to find out if we have some of this stuff. The mystery's gone a little bit. Yeah, I want the mystery's one last gone. Sam Fisher. I remember man. I, I missed when I was a I was a kid and I'd see so like really cool military tech and I'd be like, oh my god, that exists somewhere. Or the Doc Ock thing when Spider Man Two came out, I was like, yes. I want that right now, and I know I, it exists. Mine somewhere. was mechs, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Mechs, I mean, yeah. yes, I know DARPA has some walking mechs, but the truth is, is like at least currently, um true mechs with a person in them just doesn't make any sense compared to drones or tanked or no pacific you know, rim type thing yeah yeah and or well i just mean i grew up on battle tech i grew up on battle mech. Tech, i grew yeah. up on making sure you're in a creek to keep cool and firing your guns at the guy not in the creek so he overheated yeah, yeah, yeah. and taking yeah. all that shit into effect and be like oh yeah man this is and now tanks look identical like you i was seeing the abrams a couple days ago it, 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 there a couple are in the ukraine and I was watching yeah. the Abrams going, oh, wow, that tank is 25 years old and there really isn't an improvement to it. It's I mean, it's like military tech in some ways have stagnated where in other just places. Don't do futuristic gone. games ever anymore. Just do. Uh, just do. Well, that's what I'm games. saying with that's what I'm saying with Splinter Cell. <laughs> show show Sam. In the for 80s. 40 years. Yeah. 70s, Afghanistan, 80s. Go. I don't remember when he was born. I don't remember how old he yeah, is. He's probably in his 60s now in the game. And in real yeah, life, yeah. he's like, he, they need, that's another thing, bro. Get, to, get your Michael Ironside hook now because, <laughs> because, you know, life happens. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Get that, get that shit, get that shit worked out. Um, <laughs> as Terrence said, the AK 47 isn't going to improve. Yeah. The AK 47 improved a tiny bit, but it is funny that that design is like a rock that works really well. And they were just yeah. like, yeah, there's nothing really fit. It's, it's AK 47 kills people. Good enough. Um, that's it for us, I think. We're at three hours, 30 minutes. So oh, we're going to yeah? wrap this oh, up. Shit. Yeah. Everybody who got a chance to watch, if you check out the Patreon, that would be appreciated. If you don't want to, you can go to YouTube, become a member, cost you whatever it costs. Uh, helps out the channel a little bit. No sponsors. Nothing Nothing else to say. Right? Oh, you'll see a Broken Roads um, review from me coming out and once I finish this up and, and wrap up the podcast. Thanks to broken, Abzi, as always. Roads. Thanks to Thank everybody you, for what. Yeah. I heard that. <laughs> yeah. That hurt me a little bit, but it's true. Yeah. All right. Peace out, everybody. Have a good one. Don't die.